Board. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah. We're recording in both places now. Two places. I think it's time for us to do this thing. There's no well, more turning back. Then let's, let's do it. I'm gonna zoom let's in. do it, then. A little bit of a zoomage. Here we go. Okay, it begins in three, two, one. Coming up on TMS, Dog Poop Lady Strikes Again. Oh. Hoodie Man! Sci-Fi wants to be incorporated. Seattle doing some fun DNA testing. WonderCon is out! Roku 3 is in! Fitness Geek. Jury duty and more on this episode of The Morning Stream. After 87 years of turning the best possible fruit into the best possible taste... Smucker's makes a splash! Introducing Smucker's 100% fruit juices. Try cranberry, strawberry, or tropical citrus. Smucker's makes a splash. No preservatives, artificial ingredients, or added sugar. Naturally. Smucker's makes a splash. Delicious. Cause with a name like Smucker's, it has to be good. Let's test the ship's phasers. It's the world of tomorrow today. This is the morning stream. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the morning stream. This is TMS for short, and it is Tuesday, April 7th, 2015. I'm Scott. That's Brian. Hi, Brian. Why, hello. Hey, man. Uh, you <laughs> hey, know. girl, what episode is that from? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, does that sound familiar? Let's test the ship's phasers. Where do you think that comes from, buddy? Hmm. Uh, it is my favorite thing, and we won't explain what it is because there's a you know there's a chance there's something behind it. Yeah, yes. there's a chance you'll hear more about that later, and I don't want to blow it, but I will play this a lot. Let's test the ship's phasers because it's awesome. <laughs> phasers. Phasers. My favorite. Let's just say my favorite mom in a long time. Let's just say yeah. it that way. Yeah. If a certain listener's listening. He knows what's going on. He knows what's up. <laughs> uh, anyway, welcome to the show, everybody. We're here. We got stuff to do, things to talk about. Uh, you know, we're still training this dog, right? Rainer, the dog. Right. Jim Rainer, right. the female dog. And uh, it's going good. You know, she's um, less nervous piddle than before. Uh, she doesn't, good. doesn't pee quite as much as when you see her You're and using, stuff like that. What was the technique? It was that uh, you don't pay attention to her when she gets all excited about peeing outside, right? You just Correct. treat it as a normal... Mm -hmm. And when she's in the Is house, the if and like when I see her after she's been out for a while or she's just excited to be up and around or whatever, you just kind of ignore the crazy until she just simmers down a little bit. Then you just kind of lean over and then you start petting her and giving her, you know, giving her the affection or whatever. And she's she is definitely showing signs that that's working. Uh, still occasionally though, like a neighbor kid will come over and go, Hey, you got a dog! Let me see it! Mm -hmm. And they freak out and then the dog will go Boop, on the floor. Exactly. Because as soon as they get excited, yep. then the dog's like, Oh! Yep. Yeah, right. Exactly. And it doesn't matter what I tell them. It's like, <laughs> hey, Junior Billy over there, slow down, calm down. You know, because they don't know. They just want to come see the, the new puppy. And, and the hard part is... You're like yeah, do it on the do it in the kitchen where it's on tile. I can clean up the tile that way. Don't do it in the living room where you know there's carpet. Damn it! So things like that going on. Oh, just got a text from Daryl. <laughs> Daryl, <laughs> he's so jittery this morning. It's like a text for everything. Right. IRS video. What's he talking about? IRS video. He he thinks that the uh, let's test the ship's phasers oh. might come from that Star War or Star Trek. Uh, IRS video from a couple of years back. Incorrect. I'll give him another stab. Let's test the ship's phasers. All right. Think about that. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, 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 trashed Star Trek episode or uh, video game from the uh, early 80s. Yeah. I would love that game. I would too. Uh, anyway, so back to the thing. So yeah. uh, the dog, she's been doing really well. Good. And... Uh, had a problem though yesterday so I, I walked her and it was fine it was a windy day kind of cold out kind of lame i was kind of pissed that we weren't getting spring weather yesterday and we're out walking and she's shaking a little bit whatever and 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 by the time we're almost home she decides oh gotta go gotta gotta do a dumper right here in this lady's yard and this lady's yard is usually fine because you know i'm picking it up i got bags with mm -hmm. me right it's not a problem you're not, you're not a you're not a, an abandoner no i don't do that here's mm -hmm. the problem though 
two things wrong with this. Uh, the dog, Rainer, pulls up onto the grass, sniffs around for a bit, and then t uh, pops a squat. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, as she's doing this, I look at the main pane window, big like front room bay window of this of this house, mm -hmm. and standing in it like a horror movie is a lady in a like a night dress, just staring at us. <laughs> Some older lady, yeah, like uh -huh. probably in her I don't know sixties or something, and she's all oh, up in God. this like quilted night dress gown thingy. Looking like, you know, a bad horror movie, just staring at us through the window with a right. scowl on her face. Like you're just listening for the violin music. To... Exactly. With a weird 70s zoom on her face or whatever. <laughs> right. So I start going, Rainer, hurry up, Rainer, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. What are you going to do? Well, it would have been fine because I think what she was standing there for is like she probably gets a lot of dogs that crap on her lawn because that's right where this intersection thing is. So I've got the bag. I'm even ha it's in my hand. And I'm kind of waving it around a little nonchalantly, like, "Hey, look what I've got, all ready to go." Exactly, like not not uh, looking straight at her and, and holding up the bag and waving it, but just like, "Let's make a little extra flourish with the bag yep. in my hand to yep. make sure that she sees there's a bag." Yep, I want her to see there's a bag on the hand. I'm ready to go. Nothing, nothing to worry about. Not to pull out your machete and kill your family and then me. You know, just relax. Everything's fine. Right. I look down. She's got. The worst squirty squirts of any dog ever. Oh no! Yeah, the, okay. like the freaking mustard. Who knows what she got into? She's eating something bad or just getting Dealing used to her new food. Dealing out a little soft serve, right? And it's worse than soft serve. It's it's like the soft serve. Uh, sorry, sir. The soft serve machine's broken. That's like that kind of soft serve. Like it ain't working right. So it's too. I don't want to be gross, but it's too liquidy to get. A, I can't pick it up, Brian. <laughs> I can't. It's not. It's now part of the earth. It's not part. It's no longer a, a tangible item object. It is a. It is a fluid. It, it, it is, is a uh, fluid. It, if, if biology, if science has taught us anything, this matter has turned from solid to fluid. Yeah. So what do I do? I went. All right. Uh, <laughs> I put. Right, you make an effort with the bag like. I did. You I totally like faked some, it. Some, Big chunks in there that you're holding. Oh, and then you. <laughs> <laughs> I totally faked it. I leaned over. I scooped it, nothing. I pulled the bag up and I rolled it into itself and acted like there was something gnarly in there and kept walking. And she never moved. She said, stood there the whole time, folds, arms folded, just staring. I think she thinks that no one can see in, that she can only see out. That's what I think. Right. Because right. who the hell well, else would do that? At least she didn't step out on her front porch with a shotgun, hold it straight up in there, and then just like cock it. <laughs> well, at least at least that would have been like a I don't know, like at least there would have been meaning to her, you know, like it could have <laughs> confronted it. But in this case, it was just like this weird ghost woman standing in the mirror watching my dog run all over her yard and then act like I'm. I mean, it was just horrible. So I, I went funny. home. I was a little bit guilty because, like, you know, it's on her yard still. At the same right. time, she's, I'm like, you're she's weird. She's going to go check that and be like, oh, it was runny and he didn't have a <laughs> plastic shovel. Yep. So anyway, I guess what I'm here to tell you, folks, is that now that there is a dog uh, in the house again and on walks with me again and all that stuff, uh, the stories are surely to come. <laughs> so next time. Next time you know that this happens and mm -hmm. you see her looking out the window, don't look directly at her. Like pretend that you don't see her there. All right. And then after you're after uh, Rainer's done, then kind of look both ways, like you're making sure no one's around, and then act <laughs> like you're like squat over and act like you're gonna pull your pants down and do the same thing. <laughs> and then turn and look at her, smile and point and wave yep. and walk off. Yep. In fact, I'm gonna make my way. I usually don't go her direction, but I'm gonna go there every day just to see what we can do. You know, because <laughs> if she's there at two thirty in the afternoon or whatever the hell it was. Yeah. In a night coat thing, uh -huh. there's bound to be some parties. You know, there's bound to be some Kravitz. fun. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah. Totally, dude. She's like that lady in the uh, Bewitched that's always right. across the street. Yeah, wasn't that Gladys Kravitz? Was that I, Kravitz? I thought it was, yeah. Uh, I want to fly away. <laughs> <laughs> Her big hit. Yeah, that's the same, same woman. Her big hit, yeah. She had a yeah, big Gladys hit. Gladys Kravitz. Yeah. Done, done okay since then. She's in that. She's in that new uh, shooting uh, arrows movie. I forget the name of. Right. Oh yeah. She's she's great. She uh, designs all the costumes for the girl on fire. It's really really good. She's she's amazing. For the girl on fire. Too bad it didn't work out with her and Lisa Bonet. Yeah, it's too bad, right? Oh, right. speaking of which, oh, I'll tell yeah. you that later. Anyway, I'm just really glad that Angel Heart might be on our list for films. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I've come around on wanting to see that because um, I've gotten past my fear of Cosby Kid with a shotgun in a certain place. 
<laughs> that really, there really is so much more to that movie than than that. <laughs> really, I mean, are you uh, th- are you saying I've distilled it all down to one terrible moment? Is that what you're telling me? It's it's so unlikely, uh, so unlike you to mm, do that. But yeah. yes, I think you have. I think I might have. <laughs> It does it's seem rare your, for me. That is, you know, she might as well be singing Got My Mind Set on You while it's all happening. <laughs> An entire musical career boiled down to one bad single on one album. That's right, with a hair lip. Whatever, yeah. you know, it's it's all... <laughs> with a hair lip. <laughs> that is how I think of things. I can't help it. I zero in on one thing. Like Stacey Keach, people will say, oh, Stacey Keach. I go, oh, a guy with a hair lip, right? <laughs> or Or Joaquin Phoenix, same thing. It's like, right. I cannot get it. It's not even a hair. He had an accident or something. He's got like some kind of, and even right, if he exactly. did, what's the big deal? I just have this problem where I cannot not focus in on whatever the weird thing is. Like, I can't watch Van Damme movies without seeing at what stage his goiter was in size. I can't do it. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like early Van Damme, like, like what was the early, what was the first one? Uh, Bloodsport, oh, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bare- right. Barely got any kind of bump up there. It's just sort of going or whatever. A little, uh, right, the forehead thing going you get on. To yeah. hard, you get to hard target, it's like there's a turtle attached to the side of his head. <laughs> <laughs> and to me, that's all I Dolph see. Dolph Lundgren is growing in that thing. And... <laughs> That'd be great, wouldn't it? It would. I will. Give... So there's another Jean-Claude Van Damme <laughs> getting ready to hatch. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as it gets out, it's going to do the splits. And say, <laughs> what kind of a deal? <laughs> uh, so anyway, there's the dog thing. I'll keep you guys informed on how that goes. Uh, I want to give a shout out, some thanks to, I mentioned this yesterday. We were trying to hunt down who yes. gave us those hoodies. And uh, by hoodies, I mean a jacket with like a hood on the back. Just so in case people are have some kind of weird slang term with the word hoodie. Because I've heard that before. But anyway. Okay. Really? You know, haven't you ever heard that? Someone gives you gives you a hoodie. Never heard that. No. Oh, yeah, no. that's that's a thing, I guess. Anyway, uh, should I not look that up on uh, <laughs> slang dictionary? Whatever. The- whatever the hell that's called. Let's see. Yeah. Give me a hoodie. Urban dictionary. <laughs> let's see. Custom hoodies. Hoodie. You know what? Urban dictionary might have the better. Let's see. Urban dictionary. Let's just see if they still because maybe sure. I made this up in my head. Because I know, you know, if I look at Urban Dictionary, I'm going to see one thing. If I look at Urban Outfitters, I'm going to see a totally different thing. Uh, best article on clothing on the planet, covering for drug dealers, short-blooded. I'm not seeing it here, actually. Maybe maybe page five. Maybe the last. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, there's, yeah. Any is There's one. A hoodie is any person that lives or came from the hood, a.k.a. the ghetto. Like a hood rat, yeah. Once we start getting into uh, item number thirty-three, mm, is that where it starts happening? Number thirty-three and thirty-five and great, yeah. Uh, oh, there's one. Yep. So yep. I knew I'd heard it somewhere. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, kids. <laughs> my point is, uh, we asked who gave us those rad hoodies because it is my favorite hoodie slash jacket to wear. I just don't wear anything yeah. else when it's like moderate weather. I just wear it all the time, right. and I love it. And people always ask about it. The guy's name is Brian Small. Awesome. He, he is neither small nor the only Brian I know, but he is <laughs> a hell of a provider of custom hoodies, and he just did an amazing job on these, and I just wanted to thank For him in sure. public. So yes. thanks, Brian Small. I just don't feel hey, like Brian? I thanked him there. It was so crazy. It got handed to me. I'm like, oh, dude, thanks, and then crazy again, and then got it, home, and then wore well, it, and went, yeah. oh, this is rad, and then I forgot to thank him. You know, things get really crazy uh, and spectacular for you. Obviously, I mean, you're, you know, every time you walk down a hallway. Uh, it's pretty bonkers. Stopped, uh, times, yeah, yeah. I get hoodies everywhere I go, if you know what I'm and saying. hoodies everywhere. Yes, brand small. Very cool. Mm-hmm. I like that. And mine as well. And yeah. Thank you for mine. Yeah. It's even a little <laughs> big for me, but it feels so good for me. Like, I feel like I could sleep in it. Oh, mm-hmm. In fact, maybe I will later. Maybe I will. <laughs> maybe I will. Maybe I will. Let's call. Maybe I'll call Daryl. Maybe that'll happen. Maybe you should. Maybe he can tell us. Whoops. Maybe he can tell us who he thinks that phaser voice is when we get him on the line. Let me test the ship's phasers. Let's test the ship's phasers. (laughs) (laughs) It's the best thing. All right, here we go. It's Stump a Trek Nerd, brought to you by... Help bring an analog gaming convention back to the Pacific Northwest. Check out the OrcaCon 2016 game convention on Kickstarter. I'd love to have everyone come visit my hometown and play some games. Search OrcaCon 2016 on Kickstarter and support it today. That's O-R-C-A-C-O-N. Like the killer whale. Oh, like the whale. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. What was the name yeah, of the whale? What was the, what was the big killer whale? The, the important. Orca. 
No, his name wasn't Orca. Was oh, it? Shamu. Or Shamu. Uh, that's it. Shamu. Yeah. Because they couldn't find any real Moo. Get it? Right. That's a sham Moo. That's right. Uh, by the way, got a complaint while we wait for Daryl to pick up. Oh, he didn't pick up. What's what's up with that? How about another complaint? Oh, oh there he, he is. Pick up. I'm here. No, he's here. He picked up last second. Uh, real quick though, a complaint about, and this will fit to you, Daryl, because we were you were sending us some mash photos yesterday about Leslie Nelson being in an episode. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we, you know, they put the other remaining six ser- or six seasons of the show on there, which is great. And we're watching one last night with the kids before bed, and uh, they had to go back to school today. They had yesterday off, and um, up comes uh, a, an episode where the voices and the sound are completely not synced with the video at all. Mm, oh, and, I hate that. And I thought, oh, it's this player. I'll try the Roku. Nope, same thing. Tried it on the PS4. Same thing. All of them were doing it, so it's clearly the source. Uh, at least I assume so, or else all the apps are jacked up. Um, so I don't understand why that happens and how that gets past whatever QA they have mm-hmm. at Netflix. I don't think... I'm guessing the QA didn't watch every single episode of mash when they put them up there mm. so they probably batch do these things right yeah that's what i'm guessing yeah. like hey tell bill and encoding we've got another terabyte of mash for them right and that's it and then they just send it on up the line and uh that's all that's all that is right like that's all i, I you're, you're totally probably right but then if i say to them if i write an email and say netflix i am very disappointed this voice sync blah blah will they do anything probably not Oh, I'll bet they will. I'll bet if I'll bet if somebody draws attention to you know something being out of sync in one of their videos, they probably do have a department that that uh, handles those and and you know will jump in there and say, oh yeah, okay, let's adjust this. And, do you imagine that department? Their mouths move before the words come out. <laughs> yeah, it probably looks like me on Skype when people are uh, watching <laughs> TMS on the stream. I love it. Uh, all right, well let's uh, let's get down to it, Daryl. Also, any ideas? Any ideas what this is? Let's test the ship's phasers. No idea? Mm, no, no. <laughs> I, I've used my one guess. I, I have no more guesses. All right. I'll... It's a Star Trek <laughs> porn parody, isn't it? I've, I've heard of these videos. I will is give... that the, the same one with the Klingon from yesterday? Yeah, that photo I put up, yeah. Yeah. So I'll give you I'll give you a I'll, I'll, I'll give a hint that doesn't necessarily give away this particular video, but if people want to go and have one of the best times you'll ever have on YouTube, <laughs> um, go search for Star Trek Adventure. Is it Star Universal Trek Adventure? Studios. Universal yeah. Studios, right? You'll find a bunch of videos. Now there are two versions. They did this old kind of interactive one in the eight, late eighties, and then in ninety one they changed it to the one we're talking about here, where it was like this mix of green screen and actual original cast TOS actors and they you'd go to Universal Studios and you'd walk around in a uniform right and they'd take pictures of you or not take pictures they'd film you and you would be green screened into scenes with these other actors and you would interact with them and everybody's video was exactly the same in terms of the content except your parts right so there'd be people you know so in this case I don't want to give away what this is because we're going to show it somewhere (laughs) But but you need to go. This this one is not on YouTube. So I think. Right. I, and honestly, Brian, do you feel this way? I went and looked through a ton of those. This is yeah. the best one by far. This is by far the best one. Yeah. There are a couple that are that are pretty funny, mm-hmm. but um, the one we have is it's gold. Head and shoulder. It is it is <laughs> comedy gold. I'm not used to laughing maniacally by myself ever. That never happens. I was laughing yeah. maniacally by myself. Yeah. Funny. I mean, you get that text message from me right after I watched it yeah. saying, I I am laughing so hard. My face, I am tearing up. Yeah. I'm laughing so hard. I can only imagine. And at first I thought, oh, what could be so funny? He was so right. right. It was so funny. <laughs> so anyway, you can find these. And it was a thing that you just did if you went to Universal Studios. You probably paid 30 bucks or something. And then they made this video with you. And then you got to take it with you. So it is amazing. YouTube, Star Trek Adventure, Universal Studios. And then have the time of your life. It's fantastic stuff. Yes. Uh, but we'll be saving the one that features this. Let's test the ship's phasers. For a very special time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Daryl, it's time to stump you with a Trek question. Uh, are you ready? How are you feeling? Are you good? Uh, I'm ready. Oh, okay. yeah. All right. Let's lay it on you like a piece of bacon to the Skittle. What? Anyway, the Skittle? It's not a Skittle. What is it? Is it a Skittle? Skillet. The skillet. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Put a fresh piece of bacon on the skittle. The skillet. All right. Skittle. Why did that come out? All right. What episode does this next generation clip come from? All right. One of those episodes. So here you go. Okay. All right, Deanna. Just what the hell is all this? Anxiety. 
Do you still care about me? Of course I care about you. I'm worried about you. What's all this? Don't you think I'm attractive? This just isn't you. Oh, oh. oh it is. You want me, don't you? Deanna. I need you. Ah! What is this? Oh my gosh. Wow. Kind of edited, but <laughs> what uh, what episode do you think that, that came from? Actual uncut footage from an episode <laughs> of The Next Generation. Yeah, the music used to go, ee, 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 <laughs> like that. That's right. Uh, Man of the People, Force of Nature, The Masterpiece Society, or Eye of the Beholder. Those are your, those are your, uh, your options. That Beholder guy, who, uh, he had all the bees, he would hold mm-hmm. the bees. Um, and his eye that yeah, was the uh, thing that was the most amazing part of it. Right. He was inspired by uh, that guy. Who's the guy? Uh, Candyman. Said it three times. There you go. Yeah. Man <laughs> of the like, people. It's hook for hand. Force, force of Nate. Oh, he had a hook, didn't he? He did. Oh, I kind of miss. You know what? We should do a Candyman sequel on Film Sack. Speaking of sequels. Sure. Because I really. Guy, same actor, right? Same Just dude. Didn't have, yeah. um, what's her face in there? Same uh, guy. Uh, old, sideways woman. old Jake Sisko from DS9. Is what that right? Yeah, that's the craziest part. Yeah, that's weird. Anyway, Force of Nature, Man of the People, The Masterpiece Society, or Eye of the Beholder. Those are your options, Daryl. Mold them carefully in your mind as we now turn it over to you for today in Trek history. Hey. Well, back in 2009, today was the premiere of the Star Trek movie mm. that took place in Sydney, Australia. Oh, it, it wasn't here. Uh, it was in nope. May here, right? Weren't they early there? And then I think yeah. it was May. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, we watched it for Nerdtacular that weekend, the, not the same, not opening day, but that same weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we watched it here together, and we had we had special Star Trek cakes with fondant frosting. Yes, we did. One for each of the uh, the different divisions in uh, on the Enterprise. We had a few people cosplay that year. We yep. called Patrick from France on a cell phone in the middle of a pavilion. That's right. We yeah. did a bunch of. Uh, did a bunch of intros for various podcasts mm-hmm. with, with all of us yelling. That's right. I drove a, uh, I drove a uh, what was that thing? Uh, a was like Lamborghini. A Lamborghini. Yeah, yeah, I drove a Lamborghini over to the park. That was nice. <laughs> Hot shot. Ir- irony is the the little park that we were at is literally like a five six minute walk from where I live now. Isn't that weird? Really, that's funny. Yeah, I, mean, I had wow. no idea that I would move there because that used to be about forty minutes from where I live. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, enough about me, because Mr. T's looking so at So those me. of you triangulating Scott Johnson's location to stock his house <laughs> have another clue. <laughs> one more clue. Let me give you one more clue. Let's test the ship's phasers. <laughs> That'll give it away. <laughs> and uh, Seamus uh, stood up on a hill and looked like Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, and he smelled bad. That kid needed deodorant like something fierce. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. stinky old Seamus. I wonder what he's doing now. <laughs> Uh, all right, sorry, Daryl. Uh, one star reviews from Seamus. That's a good. It's a good birthday, I suppose. And this new one, this third one. How? Do you, how? Are, what's your temperature on that? Uh, with uh, what's his name writing, and you know, just kind of a different crew and all that. Not well, crew. Well, from but, what I've heard and what he's going to do with it, I'm optimistic. Mm, what have you heard? What are the? What's the hot uh, slap on that? Just that it's going to be <laughs> a hot slap. That's mm. not a phrase, is it? No, it, some, should be, it should be a celebrity gossip website. Hot slap. The hot slap.com. That's right. Jennifer Aniston showed her a certain nipple. Hot slap. Hot slap. Hot slap. That's how all the videos would go. Anyway, sorry. Is it taken? Is it taken? Is hot slap.com oh. taken? What is, don't tell me what it is. It's probably bad, isn't it? It's a digital security zone, anti phishing email service. Hot slap. Oh, that's lame. It really is. That's super lame. It's probably like. You know the home of uh, the security. You know, like a like a, an acronym, but it's mm-hmm. hot slap. Yeah, DZ or DSZ dot US helps combat phishing in two ways. Hot slap. <laughs> hot slap. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. What? What were you saying? Even that I said hot. Oh, what's the? So what's he doing with that movie that, to make it different? I guess it's going to be more adventurous and positive and about exploration which is all exactly what i want yeah that's all the star trek stuff right mm-hmm. the best thing oh i didn't even say i didn't even mention this the best thing about that video that we're talking about these videos that are on youtube mm-hmm. is the gene roddenberry bit at the beginning oh yeah right. so i'm gonna i'm gonna play a taste oh, of how it. how much does he not look like he wants to be there oh he looks miserable yeah. and he also sounds like he, every word has a whisper <laughs> a little, little Vince Gilligan yeah, going on. Yeah, totally on everything. So listen to this. Here's a little taste. 
Gotta skip ahead a bit. Hold on. Hello, and welcome to Universal Studios Star Trek Adventure, yes. courtesy of Paramount Pictures. Yes. I'm Gene Roddenberry, <laughs> and some of you may know me as the creator of Star Trek. The episode the you're about you know to see. What? <laughs> yeah, what's everybody else know you as? Some the nice slacks, uh, gray slacks wearing, red shirt wearing dude with a weird haircut. All right, hold on. Is a first. It's the first time guest stars have ever played the roles of the captain of the Enterprise and the Vulcan science officer. He's like the beaver in those Disney movies. Science officer. You know that beaver that's always like, hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. Somebody get me some more wood. All right. <laughs> Anyway, wow. uh, they well, could have put a filter on that. I agree. It's not very good. Or just, uh, I don't just know, remove the tooth the highs. and it would have been fine. Well, remember, this is like waning. This had been waning, not waning years for Star Trek, but waning years for, for his involvement, I think. Like 91 yeah. would have been, he was starting to get a little pooped on it. It is interesting that it's not next gen people, which would have been active and going at the time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it was all, like, I can tell you, every. it's just like the way, it's the way generations worked. Well, not even that. Like Spock and McCoy. Or sorry, uh, Spock and Kirk are barely in it. They probably filmed that from who knows where. They're not even in it, right? But the rest of the crew is all in like full garb, doing a full simulation on the bridge. And doesn't it feel like that's kind of how things were going then? Like Shatner and Nimoy were just a little too good for this, but everybody else would still yeah. do this this shite anyway. Hmm. And Chekhov looked like he'd had eight cheeseburgers that morning. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> Well, they're free at the Universal Studios Commissary. <laughs> it's part of his deal, I guess. That's right. He looked like a real Wessel, if you know what I'm saying. All right. Oh, hey. uh, Daryl, what's going on here? Let's do this. I'm excited, too, for the movie. I, I think uh, in new hands, yeah, potentially we could get just a fresh, you know. It's just it's good to switch these things around when you talk about a franchise like this. So I'm very excited. Uh, all right. Uh, well, oh, the question. Yeah, that, that clip. Where did it come from? What do you think? Man of the people, force of nature, the masterpiece, society, or eye of the beholder? Uh, well, hmm, I have no idea which episode did Riker go nuts. Um, it, it sounds like season seven. Yeah, and it was none of these. I think the nuts one where he thought he was seeing things and the screen would shatter and all that. I think that was yeah. a different a different episode. Yeah, it's not that. But he's definitely going nuts in some way. I am not insane, he would yell, right? Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. This first sign that you're insane. Yeah. I remember that. Um, Here he is, mate. I may be surrounded by insanity, but I am not insane. That's the one. That's the one. Yep. I'm going to say... What's this beeholder? The eye of the beeholder? Mm-hmm. Oh. That's the one. Well, did it... No, well, never mind. Um, <laughs> something about his eye and bees, I can't make anything out of that right. anyway um force of nature <laughs> masterpiece society i don't know you can't make anything out of that you're just not trying hard enough yeah yank yank on it <laughs> i put a dot by masterpiece society and that just means that that's where my pencil landed <laughs> i don't have a clue i'll I'll just go with that. <laughs> your pencil I landed guess. hard enough to me leave a dot? That's impressive. All right. Well, let's find out if that's your right answer. You say man of the people. Is that you said? No, but let's go with that. Well, no. But yeah, I forgot changing. what you said. Oh, I like your answer better. <laughs> no. Did I really say what? Which one did you say before I said that? Masterpiece Society, but now I want Man of the People because that's what you said. You think it's Man of the People. All right. You have the option to maybe change. It's, maybe it's Man of the Beholder. Yeah, it could be I, I, <laughs> I, the, I the Masterpiece Nature. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he says force of nature. Just kidding. You said man of the people. Let's find out. Is he right? Congratulations. Damn it, I gave it away. You're a winner. I totally gave a, gave it away like a dumbass. Yes. Nicely done. A man of the people. An ambassador comes aboard the Enterprise. Blah, blah, blah. He asks Counselor Troy to partake in some medication uh, thing with him, or meditation thing, after he uh, she starts to act strange. Riker notices this. <laughs> How could he not? And wonders what's going on. She kisses him and then scratches the hell out of his neck. Remember that? She was like all vipery and stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyway, there's your episode. It's Man of the People. And Daryl got it right purely because I'm an idiot. <laughs> that's all good. Uh, Daryl, the Trek Nerd, is on uh, the, the Twitter as the Trek Nerd. You can also find him at thisweekintrek, thisweekintrek.com, and the Grumpy Cast. And he'll now play a game with us where he won't give it away and we'll just get it on our own skills. It has happened, though. Yeah, that's true. Okay, rejected Star Trek episode title or actual video game? Mm. 
Let's okay. give it a sound effect. Okay. There you go. Actual video game or rejected Star Trek title. That, by the way, is the sound of uh, Tongue of the Fat Man. That, that audio clip comes from that. Did you see that dude on Twitter who helped yes, make that game? that was great. It's like, oh yeah, I was involved I was, I, like as the uh, lead designer on that game. Yeah. What? Not only that, he's going to send us, so he went on to work at what? Sega. for real? Yeah, for real. That. For real. This guy is, well, at first I even asked him, I said, what, for real? I basically said that. Yeah. He said, totally for real. He's going to send me. So the next game he worked on was Eternal Champions for the Sega Genesis, which oh, yeah. I freaking loved. Yeah. It was a great fighting game. I was all like big on the Genesis then anyway. Anyway, he's going to send me some. Oh, here it is right here. Uh, Michael Latham is his name. It says, let me know an email you prefer and I'll send you access to the original Eternal uh, Champions design. I think you'll enjoy the art and old style. Oh, wow. Yeah, dude. What are the chances that creator of the fattest tongue or what's it called? The tongue of the fat tongue man, of the fat man. Would, yeah. would listen to the show. Uh, that's just insane. Wow. Awesome. Dude, I got to make sure I send him a, a reply to this. Sorry, I don't mean to be doing this live. Yeah, I did. Okay. So I, when I get that, I'll, reply, I'll report back. All right, give us your title. What is it? Wow, maybe we should st- change this to rejected Star Trek episode or uh, Lamborghini model, and then we can get a free car. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah, he's like, I work here at the Lamborghini Italia. <laughs> you want a free car? Okay, well, we'll just keep doing what we're doing. Right. Okay. Rockabye baby or die. Rockabye baby or die? Rockabye mm-hmm. baby or die. So it's either a uh, rejected Star Trek uh, episode title or a video game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know it's a song, right? Rockabye baby. Well, part the first part is <laughs> um, Rockabye baby or die. Because if it's a video game, that's what they're playing on is... Right. Like Rockabye Baby or Die. Yeah. I I don't know why, but I'm leading Star Trek on this one. Because uh, it seems like... Yeah. I can't imagine they'd release a video game called Rockabye Baby or Die. Yeah, even, like, even Tongue of the Fat Man, even though that felt wrong, still there was something crazy video game about it. Yeah. I, I am, I'm, I'm side with Brian. I, we, we think some... I don't know how, but somehow Star Trek... An entity is born in the ship's computer and lives out ah! its life and dies there. 1966. <laughs> you didn't even TOS. try to cover it up. No, no. Did no right turns or anything. No, you could have said, I played a game this year that this was made in Star Trek. You could have done that. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, I cut him off. I didn't mean to do that. All right. Television highlights of the news of yesteryear. Let's get into the news. It's not brought to you by anyone, but it's what's... brought to you by the number 800. Ooh. Brian, we didn't even mention this. I know. It just dawned on me. Just, just remind. I just. Uh, oh, I feel like an idiot for not making a bigger deal out of it. Here, let's. Eh. Um, let's here. Episode eight hundred. There we go. Well done. Matt Manner. Uh, yeah. This today's episode eight hundred. Congratulations to us. That's a fairly decent number of episodes. I mean, you know, usually people only celebrate these big landmarks when it's like a weekly or something. But because we do this show pert near every day. Yeah. There's no point in having a birthday party every freaking week. You know right, I mean? exactly. You know, 1,000, that, that's creeping up pretty mm-hmm. quick. So uh, yeah. we'll celebrate 1,000. So every 1,000 we we celebrate every day. Smoke weed every day. All right. <laughs> I'm in. Sure, perfect. I'm in. Anyway, but thanks everybody on Twitter and stuff who've been saying nice things about the, yeah. uh, the, the fact that we hit 800 episodes. Uh, sci-fi, the Sci-Fi Channel, Science Fiction Channel. Siffy? Siffy, that's the one. Siffy? Uh, it goes with my theory that Channels who misspell their names mm-hmm. on purpose are not actually what they purport to be. So, Siffy so is no TV. longer. Yeah, true. T R U. What the hell's uh-huh. that? Uh-huh. Definitely not true. We know that. Uh, Siffy is no longer science fiction. Lifetime spelled L Y F E dash T with an I with a little uh, horizontal line over it and an M. They do that? No. No. Oh, I, <laughs> I was going to shit myself. That's a terrible idea. I'm glad they're not doing that. <laughs> I, you know what, though? We live in a world where everything's possible, Brian. It right, wouldn't, exactly. wouldn't have shocked me. Anyway, sci-fi, Siffy, whatever, has ordered... Oh, maybe they're getting more sci-fi here. They're getting, uh, they've are getting. they ordered a uh, show called Incorporated. It is a futuristic thriller from Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. You might know him. He's the new Batman. That uh, guy that Ben, ben Affleck? Yeah, he's the new Batman. Oh. Okay. In uh, previous to this, he was the Daredevil. 
Oh, the Daredevil. He was, you know, he was really good with the Daredevil. That's right. He was in that Tom Clancy movie where him and Morgan Freeman tried to blow up the world or save it. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, yeah, those two are all up in this sci-fi. Uh, let's see. They, they want to get into this uh, scripted drama thing again. And this espionage thriller that is uh, all set in the future from Matt Damon and Ben Affleck uh, is coming. from Part of their uh, Pearl Street Productions company, I guess. They do that together, I think. Anyway. So I wonder if this came, remember that green light thing that they did a while back where they were getting uh, ideas from, mm-hmm. for, for, I guess they, they took that all the way through to production. So whatever came through that. Yeah, mo- um, movies came from that, this. right? Like yeah, um, right. Green Project Greenlight, that was called, right? Project Greenlight, that's it. Greenlight. I want to see who winner winners. Do they do it every year, I wonder? They did for a while. I don't know if they still do it. I oh, mean, I know H- that uh, they haven't put up an episode in a while, have they? It's an HBO thing, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Welcome to Project Greenlight. HBO they have a, and Bravo. They have a web site uh, on the inter- <laughs> well, I guess, internet. I guess they actually did just start up a new season. Season five? Oh, yeah. Well, look at this. Not. Okay. Season four. Oh, they do show up at the end and give away stuff. It shows here. I don't see the uh, dates, though. Well, so anyway. So Stolen Summer was se- the season one winner. Mm-hmm. Season two was uh, the Battle of Shaker Heights. Oh, season four winner. Yeah, they. They well, they're at least season four. So anyway, I don't know what's going on with that, but hmm. perhaps this is their next foray into something. Uh, yeah. Set in a dystopian future, um, I'm in on that. Where companies have unlimited power, I'm in on that. Taco Bell, man, watch out. Mm-hmm. Incorporated uh, <laughs> centers on Ben Larson. An executive is forced to change his identity in order to infiltrate a cutthroat corporate world and save the woman he loves. In the process, he will take the entire take on the entire system with deadly consequences. Oh, well, of course. Hey, if it's well made, I'm in. So sign me up. Mm-hmm. That'd be great. That's coming. Watch for that. Uh, yeah, that actually sounds pretty good. Hey, Seattle uh, residents. That involves Daryl and and Bill and uh, Bill, Bill, and and Brittany. And, yeah, now. Uh, now Viking, Viking Lass. Lass lives out there. Who mm-hmm. else lives out there now? Somebody else moved out. Oh, my uh, good buddy Scott Kurtz lives out there now. Oh. Moved from Texas to there. Uh, yeah, Seattle. It's, it's the place to be. Catch it. <laughs> uh, Seattle residents are testing poop for DNA to catch puppy dog walkers. Uh-oh. Oh, oh no. Coming here soon. I did not mean this article to come on the same day I told that story, by the way. That was I know. Not, it's funny timing. Not intended. Uh, frustrated with dog owners who refuse to clean up after their pets? Yes, I am, says the lady up the street. <laughs> <laughs> An increasing number of apartments in Seattle are opting to use DNA testing to uh, identify the culprits. This is according to the Times. It's something uh, a company called BioPet Vet Lab from Knoxville, Tennessee. <laughs> they're, uh, they're, they've taken over an old photo mat in a Kmart parking lot. Yep. Uh, let's see. Founded by Vince Gilligan is providing a poo prints testing kit. <laughs> Poo prints. Poo prints. Poo prints. Great. Uh, <clears throat> they're giving it to 26 apartment and condo complexes and homeowners associations in the region. Uh, property manager at the Patala Village Apartments in Everett says the messes are all over. That's why since February 2014, tenants have been paying a one-time fee of 30 bucks for DNA testing. So how do you... Okay, you test the poo for DNA. How do you know to match the dog to it? So that means you also have to collect samples from every dog in the... In the apartment complex. Oh so, my gosh. so at some point, you've got to go <laughs> door to door saying, uh, "Hi, um, can I get some uh, some of your dog poop for the uh, DNA database that we're going to be keeping to see who's been pooping all over the apartment complex?" Yeah, it's <laughs> complex, complex. <laughs> but, but in theory, there's no way to get that poop until it poops. You know what I mean? Like. Correct. You're not. It's not like you take a swab. (laughs) Yeah, come here, uh, Rufus. I guess it doesn't have to be poop, right? I mean, it can be. You can get any sort of, uh, um, you know, mouth swab or whatever for. uh, Can you do that with a dog? I guess you can. Yeah, that's a good point. It's all DNA. Okay, so a little petri dish and a swabby, and you're in. Mm -hmm. Um, or maybe a little pee. I guess what my dog will freely give you a sample. It's not a problem. Just yeah, it's got to be tougher though. Like uh, just look at her. You pee into this cup. Doug, <laughs> well, mine will just pee on the floor and I'll swab it. How about that? <laughs> um, let's see. It's, uh, it goes on to say, oh, this is an interesting number here. The counties where this is all happening uh, have an estimated eight hundred and eleven thousand dogs. Good, oh wow! Good gosh. 
<clears throat> get uh, get started. Get started going door to door and getting all that information. Yeah, that's crazy. That's Seattle has fifty percent more dogs than children, <laughs> says the Times. One study says the average dog poop weighs one third of a pound, and the dog that is in th- let's see the dog in the three county region, uh, the dogs that are in there are responsible for over two hundred and sixty eight thousand pounds of droppings a day. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah. Where is it all going to go? <laughs> I guess in the yard. <laughs> uh, how many? Okay, here's what we're going to do. How many right. dogs in the U.S.? Just curious. Mm. Okay, facts about pet ownership. It's an estimated that 70 to 80 million dogs and 70, 74 to 96 million cats. Oh, there's more cats. Are owned in the United States. Approximately 37 to 47 percent of all households in the United States have a dog, and 30 to 37 percent have a cat. So that's interesting. A greater- but the ones, but because there's more cats, the ones who have one cat usually have multiple cats. Yeah, that's a good point. There's some cra- there's some crazy cat ladies who have about nine cats, ten cats, and they're they're bringing up that average. Well, that's that explains the differences in the averages too. Because if there are more cats mm-hmm. overall, right, fewer households, fewer with households, cats, yeah, but more cats. Right. Yeah, that's what we've learned. That's interesting. interesting. Yeah, very interesting. What does it say about? Uh, oh, this one's all about shelters and stuff. They're those. By the way, are... uh, Daryl does bring up a good question. What if your dog eats other dogs' poo? How is that DNA going to be affected? Um, shouldn't reflect. <laughs> oh, yeah. It should no, because the dog doesn't absorb the DNA of the other. Uh... <laughs> right. If they were doing that, we would have some some mutated dogs going around. Crazy. Uh, yeah, I don't think that works, Daryl. Daryl works at a big fancy like chemical thing company, mm-hmm. doesn't he? He should know that. Probably has access to poo prints. Right. <laughs> poo prints. Poo prints. All access. Uh, well, good job, Seattle, and may you ever be the home of Kurt Cobain and poo prints. All right. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, fantasy coin. Look at this. Okay. So I got Yay. my rupees They're in my pocket here. Oh, yeah. I've got them too. They came in yesterday. Oh, Okay. Pull, are got, those rupees in your pocket, or are you <laughs> just glad to be Link? <laughs> I have... Whoa! Oh, shoot, I dropped a green one. I'm going to hold the white... Just like an average game of uh, Legend of Zelda for me, I dropped the green one. Hold on. I can't... I meant to open these already. Oh, you haven't, oh, you haven't taken them out of the bag? No, I, I put them in my yeah. big pocket with the intent to do that, but here's one. So here's my... Right in bags, they have to hold a, a white piece of paper behind them so you can see them. Here's my white... My, my blue rupee. And these are these have some weight to them, man. Yeah, they're not just um, they're not crap. No, they're rad. And this is they just are. the rupee things, which he has to call hexagonal glass gems because Nintendo will sue you. <laughs> uh, there's green, red, and blue, and these are just part of this new Kickstarter they're launching, which includes a bunch of new coins, the Cthulhu coins, Dwarven coins, Water Helm, Goblin Serpent, Fantasy Kingdom, Victory Point, all these rad coins. And if you don't, if you're not familiar with what uh, they do, go to Fantasy Coin. Uh, is it fantasycoin.com? I think is the main site. Fan. Yes, I believe coin. that is correct. Uh, con, just want to make sure I don't. Simply, yeah. yeah, you can go there, look at the actual coins they've been making. I think that's them. Is it? I think so. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Point is, here's where you want to go: tinyurl.com/fcoin15. Fcoin. Fcoin15. I love how that sounds. Fcoin. Uh, they're doing a new Kickstarter. They're making new bars, like the gold bar Brian has, the dwarf bar thing mm, you've got. So cool. Uh, what are these for, you ask? It's like all your... For me, it's just having rad stuff. But for a lot mm-hmm. of people, it's like, we need cool tokens and coins and medallions and items for my D&D game or my big Pathfinder group or or whatever. And they're making just amazing freaking stuff, uh, including these rupees. So go check them out. They're doing better boxes, better pledge management, better fulfillment, better everything at tinyurl.com slash fcoin. <laughs> All right. WonderCon. They're yeah. leaving. They're done. They're done? Well, no they're more not, WonderCon? They're not done. They're just oh. out. They're leaving Anaheim. They're going to LA, which probably limits my interest in any future WonderCons because I really don't <laughs> like LA at all. <laughs> I hate that town. Um, but I like I like Anaheim. Uh, I like it there. I feel like it's uh, it's expensive, but I like it. It's small enough that uh, you can go there and not feel overwhelmed by by the rest of L.A., mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And if you go to L.A., you are overwhelmed by all of L.A. It's just yeah. L.A. Yeah. Law, for short. 
they are moving. They say this. Comic-Con International and the Salt, uh, City of Los Angeles have reached some sort of agreement to relocate the annual WonderCon to the sister convention or of the sister convention, San Diego Comic-Con, to L.A. in 2016. Brings to an end the convention's four-year stay at Anaheim. Uh, the year's event will be held in the L.A. Convention Center. It's where they do E3. And uh, let's see. A source confirmed that Los Angeles is still in the running for the International Comic-Con should CCI decide to relocate from San Diego. So it's possible L.A. may get both of these. Hmm. Um, I still think Vegas should get one of them. Don't you think? Oh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Vegas, uh, you know, it's it's just made for conventions. You know, I mean, it's that, that there's a city that is absolutely 100% built to handle conventions. Yeah. Relatively cheap rooms, mm -hmm. easy access, easy to get around. Tons of you space. You can usually walk places that you need to go. Yep. All the floor um, space you'd need for any of these two conventions, plus some. Right. Like, they could literally have more people go. Right. Um, sell more tickets. But I'd be, I'd be really bummed if, uh, like, BlizzCon, for example. I love going to Anaheim for BlizzCon. I'd mm -hmm. much rather go to Anaheim than Vegas. If they moved it to Vegas, there'd be, there'd be a part of me that's really bummed about that. Yeah. But there'd be a little, little part of Brian Nibbett that would be stoked about that. <laughs> That's right. You know that's true. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think they're going to. BlizzCon, will, I think they really like being in Anaheim because it's literally up the street from where Blizzard is. So they don't. Uh, there's a huge advantage for them staying there. Um, but, you know, Comic-Con moving to L.A. actually has big advantages because there's so much uh, Hollywood now involved, the, the, the Hollywood business involved in Comic-Con that, you know, you had it closer to town where everyone works. Why not? Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's happening. Look for that. 2016. Help. It's happening. Help. Help. Roku 3 is, uh, refreshed, is, has refreshed itself and now has voice search. I think people were involved. It didn't just do it on its own. <laughs> it just, it just, uh, evolved into, uh, <laughs> yeah, with voice, voice search. It just, it just grew it. Machines have become sentient, sentient beings. <laughs> Uh, the real Roku 3 now has voice search. That's cool. You can do that. And the new Roku 2 is even cheaper. So check this deal out. All right. Here's your deal. Roku 3, 100 bucks. Pretty cheap. Roku's mm -hmm. doing good. People like it. People like mm -hmm. the Roku. Roku 2 got upgraded to the same hardware and performance as the 3. Just no voice. That's the only difference. Oh, really? $69. Wow. What What? Uh, what else is $69 that... Uh the Does. Apple PP. Oh, the problem with the Apple TV is that my biggest problem with it is there's no hardware refresh on that thing. It's still the same old right, like, slow yeah. iPhone 4 hardware in there. That's what it has. It has an iPhone it 4 It really chip. does feel like it, too. And you're like scrolling through things and you have to wait for mm -hmm. wait for it to catch up. It's not snappy enough. They nope. need to update that bad. I think they're going to, but their deal putting it 69 and then doing the HBO thing, this is a stop gap. I think they have other hardware planned. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but anyway well that's the talk is that there's an Apple TV 3 coming this summer oh is it mm -hmm. ooh I like the talk uh, Roscoe P. Coltrane just died yeah this this just in like just oh. a few minutes ago this came in oh. I thought he died a long time ago James Best actor best known for his role as Roscoe P. Coltrane <laughs> name Dukes name Dukes that guy <laughs> right he died uh, let's see what it says here he was 88 years old that's a nice long life Mm -hmm. The Kentucky-born actor is in hundreds of TV shows and dozens of movies, uh, including The Andy Griffith Show, The Kane Mutiny, among others, but he was most known for his role as the, quote, bumbling lawman on the Dukes of Hazard, which ran from 79 to 85. I did not know it started in 79. I don't know why that's wow. blowing my mind. I thought it was newer than that. I, I thought that show ran from like 84 to 87. It shows what Apparently I not. Started a little bit earlier. Uh... Everyone loved him. Let's see. Well, let's skip it down here. The dog Flash. and 30 years. I say like I'm knowledgeable because, you know, I watched one episode of, of Dukes of Hazard because uh, you guys made me. Yeah, no doubt. Oh, this is interesting. The character's backstory was revealed early on during his 30 years as Hazard County Sheriff. Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> There's some, some lore here. His pension was obliterated by a failed bond referendum, causing him to become embittered and eager to grab whatever cash he could and by any means. But the show's creators discovered that Dukes was a hit with the children. Best insists that Roscoe's motivations come from a place of childlike na naivete, lest kids become afraid of policemen. Oh, <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. That sounds like somebody's doing a little bit of fan fiction there. Right. Them. No kidding. <laughs> it's like... 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, we don't know a lot. Let's just make up some stuff. He had a brief illness uh, complicated by pneumonia, and uh, that's that's what put him down. Oh, that's too bad. I bet that dog's not alive either. Couldn't, Flash, oh no, I'm sure. They don't live very long, do they? No, no. Yep, so he's one of the last uh, the last of the villains. Uh, he is the last of the villain people. Like, I don't think mm, Cletus is still Hog here. is gone, right? Yeah, what happened to Cletus on Dukes? Let's see. Cletus. 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 Dukes. <laughs> All right, Cletus on Dukes of Hazard, played by Rick Hurst, who is alive. He's 69, doing just fine. Oh, good. Yeah, he's fine. Don't worry about him, everybody. <laughs> he has not done much, though, since 1999. But uh, for a while there, Doris Day Show, Sanford and Son, uh, The Partridge Family, Doris Day, To Hell You Preach. Mm, and the I haven't Bob, heard of that. Bob Newhart, Kung Fu, Gunsmoke, Kojak, guy did all the shows. Good job, Cletus. But we're really not talking about you. We're talking about your dead uh, uh, show. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, there you have it. Hey, Tweaked Audio sponsoring today's show. Get your Tweaked Audio earbuds right now. The noise reduction, the engineering, the uh, music and talk coming through those earbuds are something to behold. Get uh, a big choice there. Five styles, seven great colors, all designed to work great no matter what you're sticking them into. Get your lifetime warranty and your 33% off by going to tweakedaudio.com and using the code STREAM at checkout for some beautiful new earbuds. We're going to take a break. When we come back, it's Fitness Geek. It's Jury Duty. And it's probably a long episode. It's 800, everybody. Woo! 800. Deluxe, deluxe size, family size. <clears throat> That's right. Uh, we'll be back in a minute. Before that, Brian has music. Sure. This one going out to Sarah. It's going to be a, a double shot here. Hey, Buns and Of Steel. Three weeks ago, I finally devoted myself to becoming healthier and happier. Since the start of the year, I've been making slow changes to my diet, not eating fast food, not drinking soda, lots of water, portion control. However, for the past three weeks, I have worked out every day, something I have not done purposefully for about 10 years. So far, I've lost eight pounds, only 100 more to go. And to celebrate, I'd love it if you played Darius Rucker's Tender Crisp Bacon Cheddar Ranch in honor of never eating anything full of garbage and cheese again. If Brian can't find that, Darius Rucker's Tender Crisp Bacon Cheddar Ranch will do. <laughs> Heart squiggle, Sarah. Nice. I love that. That's the, And because that was so well well presented and, and funny, uh, here it is. So we are going to play it. And because it's only a minute long, how about a cover of uh, uh, the song that influenced that? It's not a direct um, cover parody, uh, but it certainly was influenced by the song Big Rock Candy Mountain. And um, what's really cool about this cover is that it's by a band called The Beat Farmers. These guys were so... Oh, they're so funny, so uh, clever, and have such a unique sound, especially the lead singer's voice. Now, uh, in 2005, they uh, released a greatest hits album called Tales of the New West, and it is it is all the beat farmers you could ever want and need. Um, it's so good. So you're going to get the Tender Crisp Bacon Cheddar Ranch song, followed by Big Rock Candy Mountain by the beat farmers. It is a value meal of music. That's right. Here it is. We'll start with Burger King's <laughs> fabled tale and then on to the other one. Here you go. When my belly starts a rumbling uh, and I'm jonesing for a treat, I close my eyes for a big surprise. The tender crisp bacon cheddar ranch. I love the tender crisp bacon cheddar ranch. The breasts they grow on trees and streams of bacon ranch dressing uh, flow right up to your knees. There's tumbleweeds of bacon. And cheddar paves the streets Folks don't front you cause you got the juice There's a trainer ladies coming with a nice caboose Never get in trouble, never need an excuse That's the tender crisp bacon cheddar ranch I love the tender crisp bacon cheddar ranch No one tells you to behave, behave. Your wildest fantasies come true Dallas cheerleaders give you shades Red onions make you laugh instead And french fries grow like weeds You get the veg all day All the lot of tickets paid There's a king who wants you to have it your way That's the tender crisp bacon cheddar ranch
laser guns. Test firing. Really slamming gear. From Kenner's Star Wars, the Empire Strikes Back collection, it's new Rebel Armored Snow Speeder. Batteries not included. You got my message. C-3PO and Rebel Soldier action figures each sold separately. We'll get you to safety. The Empire forces. We've got to escape. Snow Speeder has laser guns with sound and light action. Got them. Back to the Rebel base. Rebel Armored Snow Speeder from Star Wars, the Empire Strikes Back collection. You have to put it together. Action figures each sold separately. New from Kenner. I've deleted all my music, but it's trying anyway. The Morning Stream with Scott and Brian and a caveman. All right. Hello, we're back. Hello. I enjoyed that Hello. little jaunt. That was great. Yeah, wasn't that great? And I'd forgotten how close the song really is to Big Rock Candy Mountain. It really is like kind of. It is. I mean, it's a it's a parody of it. The uh, melody follows it, but. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's its own thing, but it's definitely you know. Yeah. That's where they got the idea. Let's put it that way. Exactly. That is uh, one of the best versions of that song. Is this really old timey one in? Um, old yeah, Brother, Brother Where Art Thou. Yeah, it's really yes. good. It's opening credits, I think. Great movie. Oh man, I haven't seen that movie in so long. I want to watch it like right now. Hey, what's with the, the utter lack the sirens of... sirens love don't even turn him into a toad. Turn him into a toad. We thought you was a toad. <laughs> I love that movie. Yeah, y'all got a smithy. Anyway, I, here's the thing. That movie and all other great Coen Brothers movies, except for, I guess, uh, Big, uh, Big Lebowski just showed up on Netflix. But most of it's just not streaming. And it pisses me off. I'm angry about it. Really? Yeah. Yeah, Brian. That is weird. Yeah, you'd think that um, if weird. they're going to do it, just do it all, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> all right, we're going to call Bill. So during that song, by the way, yeah. UPS arrived. Oh, what'd you get there? Your 3D printer's back. It's back. So. It's a Tuesday. Did you go up and get it? I didn't see you leave. I did, yeah. Oh, it's because you were looking at the cat when to, you did it. I had the kitty video thing going, uh, I think. Okay, cool, so, man. Anyway. It's back. So, yeah, so after the show, I mean, obviously not going to do anything with it now because this thing will make too much noise. Even if I set it to calibrate, it's going to be like. Now, I will give you three guesses. Or right, is this the right bill? No, 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 yes, no, no. Yes, 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 yes. no. Wrong bill. Here's the bill. Yeah. There we go. The bill we want. <laughs> it's not the bill we want. It's the bill we need. Bill Duran, the fitness geek, <clears throat> on the line with us right now. Chinbeard, how are you? Oh. I've got my snow speeder. Nice. My oh, snow speeder. That oh, is look at that. That's the old one. Still best uh, best ship in the whole Star Wars universe, in my opinion. I have, is there a dead deck in the back? Um, I cheated. That's actually Biggs back there. Oh, oh. That is cheating. Sorry. The Biggs would never be action there. figure was much more expensive. You really want to blow? You want to blow people's minds? You put the like the the, the ghost of uh, Porkins back there, and nobody would believe you. <laughs> no, I have all. I'm working on collecting all the snow speeders. Here's a tiny one. Oh, dude, you have you. So you have the love of yeah. snow speeders that I. I do. I think it's the greatest ship in Star I Wars. Oh my I agree. I have, I think, five different Lego ones. Mm. Uh, and there's more to be had, including one that goes for about $3,000 on eBay. I have about five different sized ones. <laughs> ones are plastic and kind of cheap. I have a couple that are nice metal ones. Some where mm -hmm. the little kickstand works, some where they don't. But uh, there's one that I got when I was a kid, when the movie was out, when Empire hit. And what was it, 81? And... I don't know what hap happened to it, but that thing was metal and oh, oh yeah, the little diecast metal. It one. was so well made, like I it had was that amazing. And the, uh, the Millennium Falcon. Oh, you bastard! Mm -hmm. Mine, it was bigger though. Mine was like I don't know, about the size of a hamburger, and and it was like that though, diecast oh. metal still and painted yeah. and everything. But I don't know where whatever ended up happening to it. Would have been an amazing thing to still have, and I don't know where it went. So anyway, sad day. Anyway. For all Bill, it's always good to have you on the program. Yeah. Bill comes on. He talks about being a nerd and staying fit anyway. Uh, what's, you, uh, what's going you on? You ready for a little theater? I yeah. got a little skit plan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do you need any theme music right. or are you all good? You all good? No, we're good. Okay. Um, hello there. You are you? <laughs> hello there, good fine citizens. This this is, uh, my name is Bill, and uh, have I got a thing for you? It looks like you've all got the consumption. <laughs> you probably all very, very sick, probably full of toxins. And you don't want to go trust those to the doctors. No, they are just pill-pushing shills. But me, I've got the cure. Okay. See, I've got this remedy. It's all natural. It's organic. It's gluten-free. It'll only cost you $10 a bottle. You might as well just buy a whole case for your family. <laughs> 
Is it this, sounds. Is this Boulder right? Ants feel good uh, elixir? Yeah. By yes. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. yeah. It's 99% alcohol <laughs> with some minerals and some turpentine. What else do they put in snake oil? Yeah. Uh, mineral oil, fatty oil, red pepper, turpentine, and whatever camphor is. Camphor? Yeah. It's oh, got man. all that in there. Yeah. Did they, uh, sometimes they'd put, um, what was it called? Laudanum? It was, mm-hmm. it was like uh, uh, opium, liquid opium they'd put in there. But it began, it's like the alcohol, though. It's like, oh, oh of yeah. course I feel better because this is freaking, I'm high now. <laughs> high as a kite. Right, exactly. A little trace <laughs> so, of cocaine. Sure, sure why, why not? not? Yeah. So the, the imagery of the snake oil salesman, right, was used in all over the place for for 100 years. Yeah. And we all think it's crazy. We all, it's 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 associated with someone who is a charlatan who is trying yeah. to pull one over on us right clearly a shamster for sure clearly yeah but it still happens yep it's still a thing it baby sure does <laughs> <laughs> they've just they've just changed the medium no longer are they traveling the countryside in uh, little carts they they now have 30 minute infomercials yeah and blogs yeah, and and guest spots on lots of prominent daytime talk shows. Ah, and... uh, yes, that's so true. Mm-hmm. So I, the, what sparked this was this this article I read, and if you want to find it there, now I I don't follow this person who is referred to as the food babe. I don't know who that person is. The uh, food this, babe. Uh, that's awesome. Yes. Hold on a second. Let's look that up. The food babe. Yeah. So the article I read though. Is titled if you if folks want to read it, it's a good long read. It's called "The Food Babe Blogger Is Full of Shit." <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell me not more. Not pulling any punches. All right. Uh, so here, oh, here's I, I see her here. She's a 35 year old lady, and she makes things called. Uh, yeah, here's the Food Babe blog. All right, continue. Go ahead. Okay, so um, the article was written by someone named Yvette de Entremont. I don't know if I said that right, but oh, I'm sure that's exactly right. But Yvette is an analytical chemist with a background in forensics and toxicology, so a professional person who deals with toxins, mm-hmm. actual toxins, you know, like poison. Yeah, that'll kill you. Yeah, like injecting. If I were to inject gasoline into my veins, that would be a toxic thing in my body, mm-hmm. and he that would he would confirm that. Yeah, he'd confirm that. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Um, but people like the this food babe and other people who push this whole natural remedy thing would claim that you have toxins in your body and you've got to get rid of them somehow. Mm-hmm. Now, the, um, it, again, everyone read the article. There's a whole lot of stuff that you that, that they go over in it. But I'm going to focus on the toxin thing. All right. <laughs> You don't have toxins in your body. None of us do. And if you do, you're dying. So go to a doctor. Like, that's just the long and short of it. <laughs> just the, the very definition of toxin. Yeah. It is to be poisoned. If you have right. toxins in your body, right. you are poisoned. Wait, you go mean they're not doctor. little things you can have in your body? You just sweat out. Oh, sweat out all those bad toxins. Yeah. There's, you if can't? You're, no? No. Uh. If you're poisoned, go see a doctor. No amount of lemon water or foot pads is going to save you you're just you'll just die if you don't go i I think what a lot of people associate toxins with is like i just ate a a supersized big mac meal and i feel like crap now i need to get these toxins out of my body or or alcohol like you know oh yeah i had a big night of drinking i've just uh, i've got to wash you know coconut water to get these toxins out of my system right oh definitely or chemicals sure Mm -hmm. some something else that that um the Let's say the modern snake oil salesman will say is you got to get all these chemicals out of your body. Mm-hmm. It's so bad that we're consuming so many chemicals. Everything's a chemical. Everything <laughs> Blood is, is a chemical. chemical. <laughs> Blood, water's a chemical. Anytime you combine two elements, it's a, it's a chemical. Yeah. So it's just something to really be aware of when you when someone is trying to sell you something. And it might be a really, really long con. It might be a slow sale. It won't be. Like they won't ask for money up front. They may just ask you to, you know, follow my blog. And then after a while, you're like, boy, these ads on this blog are all kind of trying to get me to buy some silly sugar pill that claims it can uh, heal everything. Well, plus, isn't there? A, there's also okay. So, like in the babe, the food babe blog, um, a good portion of these are decent recipes. Like, oh, here's right, a creamy right. sweet pea and avocado pasta, low in fat, a high in fiber, blah blah blah. Then there's this. One for some kind of kale salad and how to make it. But then interdispersed between them are articles like, is this is healthy food destroying your guts? 
Like, <laughs> what the hell's that even mean? Spoiler, no, it isn't. No. <laughs> we'll tell you at 11, but you have to stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned or if pay me money. Yeah, again, if something is destroying your guts, go see your doctor. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> They'll let you know. Uh, your guts are still intact, ma'am. You're fine. To, to me, it's like the snake oil salesman had to go through the same evolution as stand as, as just regular advertising has had, had to go through. Mm -hmm. So when we were kids, uh, or you know, when TV was, let's say when TV was in its infancy, you could get up and go, four out of five doctors recommend Lucky Strike cigarettes for all your smoking need. Like it became, it was like, yeah. oh yeah, of course they did. Of course, I want some Lucky Strikes, and it, we just fell for it. Eventually, you get jaded and you quit falling for it because you start to realize that everyone's lying to you to get your money. Mm -hmm. And then commercials have to get smarter, more creative, more viral. They have to get funny, more they sensational, yep. like more more uh, uh, threatening. And for us, they have to hit us where we live. They have to they have to say to Bill, Brian, and Scott, "Here's something with Star Wars in it," or mm. "Here's oh something here's something with a Marvel character hawking a Pepsi or something." And they and that and that's how they get us now because they have to jump through all these additional hoops. I just think these same snake oils type ideas and people. Are just doing the same thing. They just have to go through a lot more work. And you mentioned like the the long con. They have to just they have to create blogs and then books mm -hmm. and then links and then intersperse actual stuff that anybody could find anywhere. Common sense things, and then have things like this one pill, according to Doctor Oz, will give you the biggest penis you ever had. Doctor Oz. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. So anyway. Hi. Yeah. So yeah. So what? But what you're saying though is it's especially when you're trying to find like blogs and and articles and podcasts and things that are genuinely helpful for your own health and well-being, you may end up having to wade through a lot of useless crap that's just trying to sell you something that doesn't do anything. Like, that may happen. So you, what, you, what you have to look for is be very wary of anyone promising you a cure-all. That one thing that'll get rid of your belly fat or one simple thing... Uh, no, how about lots of difficult things that are really hard to do because that's what it takes to get a six pack. Like that's the reality of it. Mm. Well, anyone that's promising you a cure all is lying, yeah. and they're probably mm -hmm. not yet, maybe, but gonna try and sell you something. Yeah, and this. So I have first hand experience with somebody who buys into everything they ever hear, mm -hmm. and it's my everything they hear except for what actual scientist or doctor or. A study will say like she somehow those are all up in the night and those are the yeah. snake oil salesmen to her but right. it's my mother-in-law <laughs> you know that they've got to be reputable when uh, the only time that they can actually get to air their stuff is at 2 a.m on yeah. <laughs> the travel channel yeah well the it's she just buys into the rest of it so for a while she was on this kick of you need to take silver supplements what? And that was going to cure everything. That was going to well, solve all of her problems. If you're a werewolf. Yeah. That's what I thought. I, said, I even said that to her. I said, you're not a werewolf. What are you talking about? And that's a bullet. This doesn't work. And she said, oh, now you don't know. Whatever, whatever. And then I started finding articles online about people who took too many silver supplements and turned blue like a freaking Smurf. Oh, no. So I showed her those pictures, which are scientifically <laughs> really? proven. Oh, yeah. You turn blue, dude. If you take too much silver, yeah. you turn freaking blue. It's the weirdest oh, thing you've wow, ever seen. That's awesome. And she's like, oh, well. And then she silently stopped taking silver because I freaked her out with this <laughs> blue guy. But anyway, it's yeah, it's very frustrating for me because every time I see her, it's something new. She'll go, yeah. Hi. she'll go, how you feeling? I go, oh, I'm not doing great today. My stupid stomach thing. And I know what it is. It is a very scientific reason why it exists and what's happening. But she has to go. Well, maybe you've had too much wheat. You know, I read wheat belly, and in there it said, to burp, to burp, to burp, burp, burp. and she just buys into all of that stuff. Oh, essential oils too. She's all into that. Mm -hmm. Like if you, but you just put a little bit of peppermint oil in your steak, and it'll it'll make you feel like you're 20. No, mm -hmm. minty steak. <laughs> it'll make your taste <laughs> steak taste like mint. Oh, and there's nothing wrong with mint. Peppermint's great. You know. Yeah, but it's not. D d you're spending money on things that you assume are going to cure ailments you don't have right. that actually do nothing. Right. If you're going to really put a little peppermint into like a humidifier and you're going to fill the room with a nice minty smell and it calms you down, makes you relax. Yep. Yes. Mission so, accomplished. But that so here, does not cure your damn cancer. No, no. Here's the ultimate irony about people who would be the snake oil salesman. When you come at someone like that and say, uh, and say look, the thing you're you're promoting does nothing you know you should go see a doctor they'll say oh well you you're just a shill for big pharma you're clearly been paid off by big pharma and it's 
the irony is that they're doing the same thing. Yeah. The this food babe person gets kickbacks from every single new natural remedy that she <laughs> promotes. <laughs> so they're doing exactly the thing that they claim other people are doing, yeah. which is the real, I would say, almost a crime there. Yeah, that they're doing. It's and it's you could be you could be doing real deception. harm. Yeah. Well, I will say this into the into the, in in the favor of this. Uh, I liked it when Hulk Hogan took on Big Pharma in the 80s. I think Big Pharma was my favorite <laughs> wrestler, and he really got sh shafted there. Uh, yeah, no, I agree, I agree 100%, dude. This, there's a bunch of yep. malarkey out there, and it's it's harder and harder to ignore the noise, and the older and older or the older people get, the more they seem to be susceptible to it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why I, that is, but yeah. I'd be surprised, though. I mean, with the people... When we were growing up and Wikipedia started becoming a thing, when I was growing up, I should say. Yeah, when Wiki, back in the old days when Wikipedia. Uh, when I was in college, Wikipedia was a, started being a thing, and, and our uh, our professors were probably right to say you can't use that as a primary source. Yeah. Uh, because the internet is just full of just misleading yeah, information. You can't trust, yeah. Hey, Brian, remember um, so, when we were kids and Wikipedia was just starting up? Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. It was an article about Bhutanese passports. <laughs> uh, but anyway, it's so easy, especially for people who are young, who, who f can read a bunch of stuff on the Internet and then assume they know everything. Because yeah. that's what I did in my early 20s. Everything I read on the Internet, I was like, well, I'm an expert in that now. Yep. All right. Yep. No, I think the big test is if you ever want to just, and I've always said this, just go on Google and type the words uh, fried chicken will, and then see what the autocompletes are. And one of them is often <laughs> kill you, and the other one is make mm -hmm. you fat or make you feel better or something. Like right, there's always exactly. the opposite. You can say yes. uh, kale causes good health or kale causes chronic diarrhea. <laughs> well, well the, and that that is. Uh, uh, I can't remember uh, the book. There's a book called The Wizard's First Rule. And the rule is that people will believe anything that they are afraid is true or that they really want to be true. Mm. And people either really want kale to be good for them or they are afraid that it's killing them. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm afraid yeah. that it tastes gross. So that's that's more. that is a genuine fear. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> it's good. It's good in uh, Zupa Toscana. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, tough. that's where it belongs. That's yes. where it belongs. Just floating in there like a like a little wet blanket of gross. <laughs> uh, it does taste good, though. Well, Bill, I, I feel like we've hopefully changed some uh, lives. We'll probably get a bunch of angry emails from people who are on some, you know, they're selling this stuff or something. And that's fine. Well, you know, whatever. We, we, well, they're just shills for big, uh, what's the, not big pharma, the opposite of that. Big snake oil sales. Big fake, right. fake. Big, big, <laughs> big snarma. Big bullshit. Snarma. <laughs> I'm a representative for big bullshit. Uh, excellent. Well, I've enjoyed our time together today. Wonderful. Do you have anything else you'd like to mention before we go? Uh, no, not really. Just head on over to PunishProps.com. Check out what we've got going on over there. There's always something good going on there, right? Sure is. Always. Bill, take it easy. Have a good week. Bye. See ya. See ya. Bye. Yeah. 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 All right. Now it's Justin time. Justin, Justin time. Justin time. Yeah. And I ever, See what you did there? Just in time. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, it's pretty funny. And we all are better for it. So I've not had confirmation. Oh, I have it now. These are their stories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm terrible with names. Justin Robert Young on the line. Hello, Justin. Hi. Hey. Hi, friend. Hi, friend. Hello. Are you where are you? You're driving He's or in the something. Studio. Oh, is he? Oh no, there he is. Okay. Yeah. I heard like a hiss. It sounded like a car hiss. Or something. It's that weird initial Skypey thing. Yeah, Skypey hiss. You know how it is. Uh, you get the hiss shivers. Hey, what's going on, man? <laughs> How's life? What are you doing? What's what's up? Oh man, um, things are good. Yeah. Uh, who got Fast and Furious Seven for the movie draft? Just real quick. Do you remember who got that? I believe that was the guy from Queens himself, okay. Andrew Zarian. Okay, he's gonna do well, I think. Uh, his other movies may not uh, win him in the end, but he he man that thing just creamed it over the weekend. Holy crap! If it sustains, uh, that's the trick, right? It needs to sustain for the next couple of weeks, but whew, broke like every record ever. Broke the top ten all time best uh, openers. Like that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. People love people love cars and Vin Diesel. Yeah, right. <laughs> you think he's the so? Who's the big draw here? Like, um, 
do you think it's Vin Diesel now? Uh, was it the Paul Walker death and that drew a bunch Just of people? Just the fact that, yeah, the, the, the sensationalism of Paul Walker. Oh, this is his last film. We got to see. Yeah. What do you think about it's that? not like everybody was really, really, really crazy about like, oh, my God, I can't wait to see what happens in the next Fast and the Furious movie before. People just love. I mean, there, there was a, a great podcast where I was uh, listening to. They were talking about explaining why Fast and the Furious is kind of a success. And yeah. there's number one. It's embr- it's fully realized what it is. Yeah. It is over the top, like physics defying Mm-hmm. car insanity that is you know one half car porn uh, another half having these same people kind of play the exact same roles over and over and over again it's it's almost like like dukes of hazard right like you know but but you put in a little bit more action than comedy right but it was the same i see what you mean because the setup on on dukes was always and brian's only seen one episode so this will <laughs> this all sound new but every week there was a formula and that formula well, yeah. involved the duke boys getting to some sort of trouble boss hog having some kind of scheme them jumping over a ravine having it pause before the commercial and wonder through if they a, were going to make an it open, uh, portal on a train that's driving by right exactly oh that's always good fun when that happened but it was <laughs> it was fantasy fulfillment sure for a certain demographic right you know a poor rural uh anti-authority car nuts yep totally like that, somewhat that racist. Yeah. Popular demos. Here's the big key with Fast and the Furious. Yeah. There are a lot of not white people. <laughs> and and that is for whatever you want to say about, you know, like, OK, well, that's something that you see either rare yeah. at, at the movies or not, depending on your opinion. But it is odd. Or sorry, it's not odd. It, it is it, it is good business to say oh, wait, now all of the not white people can look at the screen and say that looks closer to me than James Bond. Right. Right. Well, I got a I got an article that speaks exactly to that, which says this. Here's, and this is from Jenny Josephson. Josephson. Get that out right. Thanks, Jenny, for sending this. <laughs> says, uh, Furious 7 audience, 75% non-white, says uh, some diversity study. It says, uh, ethnic, ethnically diverse cast, playing off in a big way for Furious 7. The Universal movie opened with a franchise best, blah, blah, blah. Talks about the money. It says, according to the Universal studio, 75% of the audience in North America was non-Caucasian, generally in line with previous installments. Hispanics, the most frequent moviegoers in the U.S., made up the majority of ticket buyers, 37% in total, followed by Caucasians at 25 and African-Americans at 24, Asians at 10, and other 4%. Who's the other? Yeah. That would be uh, like Arabic descent or uh, what would that be? Eskimos. Uh, they don't like that. Sorry. Inuits. What else is there? Um, yeah, those north of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> the wildlings, right. They're wild always lings, under, yeah. Yeah. underrepresented. Lings. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Such a loud minority, though, man. Jeez, those guys. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's interesting that the movie breaks down that way. But, but what you're saying is that's not by any mistake. That's... Um, I, I don't mean they're trying to do it overtly, but the but clearly whatever they've built here uh, just is that appealing to across the board. Well, and and to your question on whether or not this is about Paul Walker being dead, I don't think it is. I mean, I think that that certainly gives a little bit of a boost to it, you know, a, a little curiosity factor of, well, how will they handle this? Uh, it doesn't seem to have suffered any. You yeah. know, nobody is, is, you know, being like, oh, wow, that really cringeworthy Paul Walker scene where... You know, he just like says, I need to return to my home planet and the animation slide, you know, uh, <laughs> visibly removed. Oh, geez. Um, that's like that seems to be handled well, but everyone's focused on like, oh, look, they're bringing Kurt Russell in in the same way that they brought Jason Statham in for to be the bad guy for the next one. And then this one's going to be in New York. And like, mm-hmm. we're just going to like. Pound that nail right on the head of like, oh look, Kurt Russell escaped from New York. Now he's doing this, but fast. And, but Vin Diesel's gonna growl and talk about family, and then they're gonna, you know, hit the nitro boosters. <laughs> right. The car part is something you have to never uh, discount in the series. I think because it's it's a uh, the car part of it, and that kind of well, you called it car porn. It's exactly what it is. There will always be a place for that. 
Like there's never not a good time to have rad cars in a movie. Oh, dude. People love it. Yeah. People love cars going fast. They look new looking cars yeah. looking like they're doing very, very exciting things. Cause even that you know, we are afraid to do. You go get a new car. What's the first thing you do? Immediately put it in your garage. Yeah. Right? And yeah. you buy a, a, a car cover for it because you don't want it to look like crap, like the car that you just, you know, uh, got rid of to get this brand new one. You don't do things like go to your other friends with brand new cars and say, hey, let's the eight of us hijack an oil tanker uh, <laughs> on, on the side of it. And it's going to involve one of us jumping off the top of it. These are things <laughs> that we don't do yet would seem really interesting. Mm -hmm. Like if I called all of everybody, we all had randomly come into a bunch of money and got new cars. And I'm like, all right, here's the first thing we got to do. Let's <laughs> rob a bank. Uh, you guys would be like, uh, all right, that's, you know an awesome idea but no and please don't call me again <laughs> yeah yeah well um somebody compared it yesterday i was somewhere i don't remember where i saw this in the news somewhere that they were comparing it or saying that it's succeeding because it's basically a superhero movie that they've taken that formula and thinly veiled it by saying in this case the superpowers and costumes are the cars and otherwise the characters are kind of similar to what you expect from those archetypes but they're doing things that only heroes could do in a fantasy universe of superheroes and villains and that that's essentially why this is resonating so much because everyone loves a good hero you know superhero story whether they know they're watching one or not how does that land on you that's good yeah. uh, i would like to think that it's uh basically the burger king kids club where everyone's wheels <laughs> <laughs> even better theory i think that should have been what i read in the news um, uh no i mean i i do think it, it is the the uh, it, it is the, the the James Bond of our era, mm -hmm. you know. It, it shares a lot in common with the modern Ma Marvel Cinematic Universe, however, in that, and I would not be surprised, as well as these movies are doing, that you might see spin-off movies, mm. or they could be they could do something really interesting and try to push that to Netflix or something like that, where like you get the ludicrous. Four episodes. Storyline, right. <laughs> yeah, it's surprising it. they haven't, with seven movies, it's surprising that they haven't done that yet or even talked about that. Well, in one in one way they have in that Tokyo Drift was was a spinoff. Um, I mean, that was a standalone, totally well, but different that, that cast. was when the franchise was in dire straits. Sure. It was good, though. Mm -hmm. I love that one. <laughs> I, no, I don't know. I thought it was, it was good. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's regarded it's, as one of the better ones, and I haven't seen it. Franchise. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, the, yeah. the idea that you would do a competent movie with no stars... It would make the kind of money it was, which which wasn't crazy, but was respectable. Yeah. Uh, and then have the Vin Diesel teaser. Yeah. At the end. And then uh, and then bring back the guy who died from Drift to make yeah. it all, I guess, a prequel. <laughs> I don't know how or or I, so that's the weird bit because your hero in Drift spoilers everybody. I know. Great. Well, thanks. Now I don't have to watch any of these. Well, we're past the statute limitations on yes. that one. Yeah. But but he's dead, and yet here he is again. One of the cool one of the coolest characters in the newer in the newer films. Well, but he, they tied that up. Did they tie that up in the last the oh. way they brought in Jason Statham? I haven't seen the last one. Who is the big bad? Yeah. I believe in this movie, or maybe it was the the, the bad guy before. They yeah. tied that up, so that dude's dead. Oh, he's dead now, dead, dead. Yeah, but so he so died he's twice dead in, in the modern timeline. <laughs> See, this is why it's so awesome. This I don't even care. Look, like you just it's this it's amazing. Okay, it's amazing the movies are doing as well as they're doing. Period. Okay, that they just even exist on the plane they're existing, and that they have decided to go all in. Like they're not trying to pretend like it's anything other than what it is they seem to be having nothing but fun with it yeah. and they've created this just juggernaut out of what should have been this one time one shot dumb movie this over testosterone dumb movie and instead they've turned it into one of the bigger franchises it, to me the story there's some story behind all this that needs telling i don't know what it is but there's something there there's something kind of there's some kind of weird primordial ooze about their success story well, that part of it is know. they knew why people were going to the movies mm -hmm. you know they knew what their product was mm -hmm. they they knew why uh there there was payment for their services and they have continued to ratchet up and give people more and more of it without 
you know, and luckily their particular product is something that's kind of fairly evergreen. You know, we're, we're kind of always going to want like cars don't age. You know, even the people that are playing these these characters in the modern era, you know, like Vin Diesel can be doing this until he's 60. They just brought in Kurt Russell to be the bad guy in this movie. <laughs> right. He's like 145. Yeah. So there's no real age element on it. And hell, death can't stop the franchise because their co-lead just died and they had their biggest opening ever when he only filmed half the movie. Yeah. And so, have you seen it? Have you seen this new one? I guess I should ask that before. I haven't. Okay, no. I have not either. Um, I'm actually kind of I'm, I'm out of I'm out of date on my on my Fast and the Furious. I'm completely out of date on it. I've seen. We just don't want to give uh, give that team any money. Is the problem? Yeah. I don't want to give guy from Queens Andrew Zarian any more. Uh, <laughs> GFQ. Yes. Yeah. I don't. Uh, I don't think I've seen anything since the third one. I think. So I, I, I skipped the second one too. I love the first one when it came out in theaters. I like Tokyo Drift. Yeah. Um, you know, the cars are lighter there. They yeah, they drift. are. Yeah. The the, the, the Tokyo they, cars are crazy light. Fine from the trailer. Yeah, those things do drift for a reason. They're barely on the ground. <laughs> um and then <laughs> Yeah, other than that, I haven't seen I didn't see Fast and Furious or Fast Five or the six guy one or the <laughs> furious seven we're angry that's where we are now right furious seven furious seven there's seven films unbelievable i just i just think it's an important moment in film history that's all no it, it's listen it it is great and and i am uh, i am excited for the success of that franchise and, yeah. and one day i'll probably watch them but i'm not really that much of a car guy Right. I'm I'm way more excited about the fact that they just started. They just put up Star Wars on iTunes last night. Oh right, oh, yeah, really? that happened last night. Also Google Play. Also oh, I saw. Else. Yeah, I did see something from Voodoo about that too. And are they the not digital. the? Uh, they're the original cuts, aren't they? Or, or am I, are they the redos? No, oh. they are not. Yeah, they those. are going to soak us for another twenty dollars <laughs> for those later. But right. what we are watching is a masterful plan unfolding. All right. Like anybody who thinks that I, I'm, I'm now convinced that Star Wars will be the number one movie of all time. Yeah, well, it'll have to be, right? Oh, you Star mean the Wars one that's second. coming out? Because what they are doing, yeah, is even as we're excited about Fast and the Furious, <laughs> we're talking about Star Wars. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about Avengers. Yeah. Well, we're going to be talking about the Star Wars trailer. You know what? You guys just oh, right. y'all should just by the way, skip just skip Winter Movie Draft cuz that's just a fight over who gets Star Wars. Right? <laughs> yeah, we've talked about it. really it. is. Yeah, it's going to be like uh That's ridiculous. Everybody everybody uh <laughs> bidding 100 all at the same time. Yeah. Well, and and the question is and there there is a debate on whether or not we should even offer it like where we'll have like star half of star wars and then another half of star wars mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but i don't know we we've that's star another. wars week one star wars week two <laughs> yeah we have we've yet to kind of get into uh exactly what what, what that's going to be yeah but listen fear will keep the other franchises in line fear of this battle station <laughs> uh it's, it's fully operational battle station <laughs> uh it is going to be insane because I think we are going to get an announcement of original uh, original movies mm. the original cut movies uh, which will send George Lucas into a conniption fit you will, I, I will be able to lead my head out of my window in Oakland California and hear the the tea whistle of uh, George Lucas's face uh, <laughs> as he steeped <laughs> at anger uh, from from Napa yeah well, but, four billion uh, is plenty. He's fine. He's fine. This is a big thing for him, though. Yeah. The whole idea of like continuing to perfect stuff, and like there is only one edition of anything, and it is the most recent edition of the little corrections and the little changes and the little differences that he's uh, continued to make. Now, as frustrating as that is for Star Wars fandom mm -hmm. to understand, uh, that is his prerogative on it. I do believe that Disney is going to release original cuts of of these movies, and they will happen within two months of the release of the new movie. Like, 
I, I think that they there is somewhere a big Google calendar where they have this entire product launch rolled out and it's going to be insane. Mm -hmm. We will be rolling into Star Wars and that this this show, not just this segment, this show, the morning stream, mm. four days a week, mm. will just be the two of you frothing about <laughs> Star Wars with occasional guests who just start yelling, <laughs> Star Wars, Yoda, yeah. <laughs> poop jokes, poop jokes, Brian, and nothing but Star Wars content. Yeah, that's, that's right, that's right. I don't think you're wrong. I think that's going to be the Frog Pants Network for two weeks. Like everything anyone says anywhere will be all about this. Uh, you know, people will probably get a spoiler show again finally for that movie. Out of I you know. and me. Well, I'm telling you, it's going to be seismic. There's no question that this is going to be one of the biggest things in the history of ever. And everybody said this back in '99 with Episode One. Uh, the stage was set for the exact same kind of thing. The oh, only yeah. difference here is that there's this general mood of it's in the right hands now. All the right people are involved. All the wrong people are off the project, including George himself in a lot of people's minds. You know, there's this this uh, the original universe. It's not some weird prequel world. It's just the raw ass Star Wars we've always asked for again since we were kids. And, and now we're actually going to get it. And if that's fulfilled, even 25% of its fulfillment... I think we're on to the next generation of uh, of they own everything. Forever. Yeah. You know? No, it's it's going to be it's going to be great, you know, cuz I'm I'm going to Star Wars celebration. I do think I'm I'm, I'm totally out on the on on Vegas for for the podcast awards. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, I'll uh, just have to go up and accept in your honor to No, I guess uh, Brushwood's going to be Ryan, there. Ryan Ryan will be there. So we'll yeah. just we'll devise something insane to do, but uh I realized that I to get in, the earliest I could get in would be 11.30 that night. Oh, God. Yeah. Not oh, worth yeah. it. I mean, Eve not, pretty much at three the next day. Yeah, not worth it. The entire not event is being run by bamboo and cat hair anyway. So <laughs> it's not like you It's not like you could do much from that vantage point. Yeah, it's not uh, It's not looking yeah. great. I mean, I, love, I absolutely love that Brian's going to represent, and I absolutely love that we're going to probably win all these categories. But... It's wow, bold statement. Boom. We probably Boom. are. We probably are. The, 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 the 20 other nominees. I don't think, here's what I don't think, just to give a quick prediction for next week. I don't think yeah. uh, the instance wins. I think that uh, we'll get clobbered by uh, the red v blue guys. Mm -hmm. They they just kill everybody, and that's fine. They're they're great. Um, it's just a, That's just a huge category that's very hard to compete in, and we've won it once before, so I'm okay with that. TMS, I think we win. I think we win that one. I think uh, like DT, comedy? yeah. I think um, uh, Night Attack totally wins at least one of their categories. The one that you guys have pushed the most, which I think is which one did you push the most? NSFW or it pushed harder for mature? Mature, yeah. Maybe it was video. I don't know. Either one. One. I mean, like we we basically all we pushed was the was the ticket. We You're pushed right, right. the Diamond Stream ticket on on uh, on on T two T two side. So Tom will win. Brian, you'll easily win Coverville. Uh, what was the other one? Oh, film sack will totally win. I think we, I think we're going to win everything but the instance. I really do. Tom wasn't pushing it though. No, I mean, he like, didn't we hardly were, push it at all. We were pushing it for him though. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, if you look at that list, eh, I'm just saying there's some okay stuff on there, but I really like Tom's show. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I just think that we win it all and Brian will go up and he'll take those from the dead, sweaty, cold hands of whoever they replace <laughs> what's his name with. Cause he won't be there. It's a uh, Chris Jericho. The, the wrestler Chris Jericho is now the new, um, wait a minute. It changed. It changed. So like, uh, wait it, a minute. It, it, I it, haven't it, heard it, about it, this. It, You're it, telling me that he's not there anymore. What's his uh, Dennis Miller's out. <laughs> Chris Jericho's in. I knew it was going to happen. The bamboo and cat hair strikes again. <laughs> oh, I knew it. I freaking knew it. He got one whiff of that. Undercooked piece of cheese and went. Ah, hey, hey, yeah, I'm not going to be doing that cha cha. I'm cha -cha. Gonna, I got something else going on. I'm that. dropping the mic. I'm out of here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, you sorry, know, Jerry. Go ahead. Dennis Miller is. Uh, he's a dude who's still to this day. You know, he he plays those big corporate gigs. You know, he, he doesn't have to do anything he doesn't want to. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't. I, I'm not. It makes me wonder if they ever had him in the first place. I don't know. <laughs> you know, like, uh, oh, we sent an email to, to Dennis Miller. Let's start talking about how we've got Dennis Miller for the podcast awards. Yeah. It's like all those, it's all those panels they have on the schedule. We've got so and so canceled. Cancel. Cancel. Yeah. We're leaving it on the schedule anyway. Cancel. Is anyway. that a thing? Yes. Is that, 
there's yeah, a there's bunch a of, bunch of there, you look you scroll through the schedule for um, uh, for speakers or not speakers but for sessions and I'd say easily a third of them are canceled. I think it's going to be seven non English speakers flicking cards at you in a room. <laughs> It's not going to be that bad. <laughs> Our panel is still on. All right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's funny. I think if you want my my guess, I'm guessing that a bunch of these people um, maybe did it for tickets. Because if you're a speaker, you automatically get get VIP tickets to the whole event. Yeah. And I don't know, you know, if they're if they're doing a bang up job of managing. Um, uh, declines and cancellations for people who were set up as speakers and are now no longer set up as speakers to revoke their VIP passes. You know, oh, we've seen, they may still we've be. seen other things in their management style that maybe lean towards the. Is it it? Where does it rank on like huge gigantic shames that this isn't run like clockwork? Uh, uh. Let's say this. What's a good comparison though? I don't it's, know what it's, to compare it to. It's about a ten percent of a porn con or porn dex or whatever it is. <laughs> is, that, like, is that kind of what you're looking for? Like a scale? No, like, I mean I just mean like for <laughs> we benefit like there mm. are a few places for which say we are a legitimate business and media conference. Yeah. Yeah. And the people that we want to have here are big titans of this industry, for which the three of us qualify as as people who would be on panels and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we create products for which are legitimized by the professionalism of a conference like this. And I know, eh, if you don't like it, start your own, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. fine, right? Okay, I understand all that. However, this is something that has a name, it's been around, it's got a reputation. If it tomorrow or next year were run really well yeah. and every time that you talked about it within these kinds of circles i mean like the fact that this kind of talk is out in the open on on the podcast and isn't just in an email between me and brian or on the <laughs> phone with me and scott yeah. shows you how long this has been a problem and how big of a problem this is. yeah and i don't even know if i'd call it necessarily a problem i just remember well i don't know like the Borkwin brothers. So, I've got the the context, or there's the context of like the first few of these that were run in Ontario, and then the first one when they moved to um, Vegas. Vegas were done by Tim and Emil Borkwin, um, two guys who who were known as the Podcast Brothers. Started shows early on, um, great guys, and they turned things over to Blog World. Now, when they were doing it, it was a it was a it felt like a very tightly run ship. Um, the you knew ahead way ahead of time what the sessions were going to be you could plan your you know your your time there very early on um the event space was locked down parties were locked down as far as like when things are going to happen i mean you knew you knew very early on everything that was going to be happening at the event and i feel like with this one we knew maybe a month in advance when our session was actually going to be where it was going to be, and boy, if it conflicted with something else that one of our other panelists was going to be in, mm -hmm. then we probably were going to be screwed. Yeah, yeah, but, I, um, yeah. It's not being. It, look, uh, here's what may happen. I mean, I know what you're getting at, Jerry. Like, let's say next year, new management, they nail it, mm -hmm. and here's what'll happen. Oh, it's all really went real, want, uh, real well run. Everything's great. Everything's in line. Uh, and then it would be me going, "Hey guys, uh, I, I'll come and do a panel. Me and Ibit will come and uh, do a thing." Oh, will you now, Scott Johnson, who on your show just ripped us a new butthole and, for the last oh, two yeah, years? We're winning none of these awards now. We've completely <laughs> squandered a month and a half's worth of work in five minutes. Well, that's my th see. That's my big question because the awards thing has been hit and miss in the past anyway. Like it's never been this thing, this prestigious moment in awards We're going history. 0 for 8. Yeah. So yeah. if you think, if that actually yeah. happens, if hey, that actually... I'm number one. I, I love the New Media Expo. And I, I feel like it's... <laughs> like, like what you're talking about, Scott Johnson. Uh <laughs> well, you, now would be the time to distance yourselves from me because I'm going to stick to my, <laughs> uh, my assertion that things are a little bit wonky over there. And I don't know why they are. And I hope for the best for them. I hope it gets better. Uh, I wouldn't want the job. It sounds I like a huge that, pain. You know what, though? Uh, you know, they're... they're um, they're close. They're, uh, there's some things they could do with scheduling and information and communication, things like that, that, uh, um, that are simple tweaks that I think would, 
would make such a huge difference. Maybe not hate on Serial, the podcast, while talking about how oh, it's being the nominated. The podcast awards away, or the nominees, uh, nominees away. That yeah, was a right, weird night, exactly. that whole how night. About, like, this was a massive year for podcasting. This should be, like, the keynote to this convention, if I were booking this convention, Blue mm -hmm. Sky, right? The first thing I do is try to get, like, Sarah Koenig, Koenig and Adnan over the phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's the sequel. It's the... Uh... Like that's, no, I want a conversation with them live at at New Media Expo. All right. right? That, that would be smart. So, yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah, I was just going to go... By the way, I was just going to go to uh, nmxlive.com and go into the conference to the keynote section, and um, the menu still says 2014 keynotes. <laughs> what? These awards. That's amazing. Uh, we went hard, so hard for these. We're no, ruining I, it. I right still think now. we're going to win it. I still think we're going to win it. Oh, I guess the link. I guess the link. Uh, it's funny here. The link shows you. So it's the 2014 keynotes, and if you go to that page. It's uh, Penn Jillette crowdfunding secrets, and it's a picture of me, Nicole Builder, and Steven Schleicher, and uh, Gnomewise all sitting up on stage for the uh, like the the point at the video that it's locked down is as a screen grab of me accepting the award up on stage with everybody from uh, from hey. TRS. Hey. Then if you go down the future of podcasting by Leo Laporte, no, no, Norman Pattis, Noah Shenock. Oh, it's that same screenshot of me on stage. Let's go to the third video. Yeah, third video. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I am not kidding you. Pendulette's not leak. going, by the way. He's There's not doing this. There's a leak in the show notes. This is all bullshit. Every, there are seven videos, uh, but all they're all the same video, Jessica and they're all head? they're all Ibit uh, accepting <laughs> the word, and Nicole, and Bill, and Gnomewise. That's and amazing. Steven Schleicher. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> it's just all I'm saying, this is all I'm saying, is that... If this, if you told me, and I know I'm biased, all right, but if you said to me, hey, guess who's giving out the awards this year? Or guess who's going to do a keynote? Or let's just stick to the awards. Who's going to do the awards? Oh, it's going to be Justin Robert Young and Brian Brushwood up there, t uh, tag teaming it up there, giving away the awards. That already sounds like way more like a real thing, first of all, a real thing and a smart thing and a fun thing than telling me that Dennis Miller mysteriously dropped out at the last minute. Now we got a wrestler, is it? Who is it? Uh, Chris Jericho. Well, Chris Jericho does have a very popular podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he he is not a terrible uh, a, a terrible choice yeah. for it. Yeah, no, not at all. He'd be a great first choice, but I still say yeah. they wave that Dennis Miller flag and had no flag to begin with. I mean, maybe. I mean, that, now now you're actually just making accusations. Nah, I'm just getting all pissed. <laughs> 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 We're gonna win uh, all eight, though. We're winning all eight. I'm telling you. That's. I mean, I guess here's my 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 big issue and it's not really an issue it's just kind of like a wish my big wish it's is a that wish you <laughs> it is a wish you like and, and like get podcasts that are way bigger than us right get joe rogan mark Marin, adam carolla kevin smith right yeah get those four yeah, yeah. Uh, and and chris hardwick right yeah and say build your conference around them every year say you are all gonna do shows we build it around show content. You you kind of you have your panels about like oh how to do this, how to set up a microphone, how to fund your pot. I mean all the stupid panels that everybody loves to go to and and everything. But you build it around these massive podcast listening audiences, and then you do each night you do super panels, and it's the seven heroes, and they unite like the Avengers. And you do Thursday, you do comedy night. You know, uh, Friday you do, you know, now there's all these wrestling podcasts. Do wrestling night or something like that, where now you get to see these seven people and they all do these big, big cross podcasts, which they do now anyway. Like, they all voluntarily go to do it. I'm sure they would like to do it if they also got paid to go to Vegas and got put up in a nice hotel and got a little money in their pocket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, they you know, should they, be able to they, afford they, it. These tickets are ridiculous. The virtual ticket alone is five ninety seven. That gives you access to the all the sessions via audio recordings and PowerPoint. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not worth five ninety seven. No, but it was a lot cheaper um, months ago. That's the thing. I mean, they they start out with really like ninety nine bucks, and then they just keep ramping it up. And um, I don't think you can. 
you know, with, 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 tra- with attracting a lot of independent podcasters, I don't think you can do that when you can't, when, when they have to kind of look at every nickel and dime they spend for, for what they're making. Well, plus exp- it's so expensive to exhibit in Vegas. It's not cheap. It and, and, yeah. By the way, I'm just, I'm looking at my Twitter. I have my Twitter, my tweet deck up yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, I just like see little things popping up. Anybody who follows <laughs> Ice Warm on yeah. Twitter yeah. has to be so intensely confused because he's just <laughs> tweeting things like it's the chat room. Like, like, <laughs> like you say that and all I see it pop up is uh, 597? Screw that! Yeah. Like, if anybody is not listening to this show live, they're like, what? Huh? What $597? <laughs> uh, he's doing that. There's another good one. The podcast awards this year sound like total cluster F. I guess that has some uh, context. That has context. Yeah, that there's has context. There's a subject. Right. Yeah. There's a predicate. There yeah. is an understandable situation for which we are modifying by way of a descriptor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's yeah, amazing. That's you know, one amazing. like... Uh, uh, let's see. Here it is. Tokyo Drift is a prequel, Scott Johnson, and everything is a prequel to Seven. All right, <laughs> and that's fine if it's an at reply, right? Because then right. You, are, you are having a conversation with somebody that's watching. Anyway, yeah, man. Oh, geez, this has just turned us into us. It just- really has. Listen, here's the bottom. Here's the bottom line. I'm super stoked that we'll probably win all these things, and if we don't, hey, it was fun to to compete with a bunch of great podcasts and all the uh, good luck to all the winners. Uh, there you go. Oh, and Nibbit's going to do an amazing job. He's going to have this great panel. He's going to knock everybody dead. Mm. He's, the, he's the Lord of Vegas as it is. Just like all that's good. There's nothing but good coming out of that. <laughs> there. See? Have you, have you secured the the other person that is not me? That oh, is- yeah. It's it's uh, Schwood. Yeah, Brian's going to do it. Brian's oh, going to cool. be on that panel. Oh, awesome. That's great. Yes, he's uh, taking over for the, the pregnant uh, Nicole Spagnolo. Yeah. It was almost it would just a pregnant be up there Tom. Puking, but, basically. Yeah. She would just be up there. <laughs> Nicole, how do you build community? Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, she's. Uh, by the way, always thinking about Nicole. She's. She's. Yes. She's got. Got. Got it rough oh, right now. Her well. Whew. Tough women, yeah, I know. No, we have a lot of tough women. How far is she along? I should probably just text her. Uh, she's. I don't know. What is it? Four months? Something like that. Not even That's that. Right, she's yeah. due in November. I want to say so three months. Where yeah. would that be? Three months. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, there's anyway. uh, it's fine. I'm looking all over the site to see if they actually do have some some keynotes because I could have sworn that they announced something about somebody from Serial being involved with one of the keynotes, but none of their keynotes uh, are listed as far as who's speaking. Well, they've got Adam Carolla as a speaker, but I don't think he's speaking. I think that just means he spoke there once. Okay, all right. We we should not just be like. I mean, this is. I agree. Something that the deeper you look into. Well, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. I I agree. No, no. no. I feel like the further well, just, we go, I'm really just curious as to uh, the furthest we go, we're going to find Chud eventually. That's the problem here. We're going to find a bunch of Chuds at the bottom of this pole of this thing. But I'm, what I'm, I'm saying find is Daniel Stern doing the Chud panel. Right. If you're going to go, I'm just saying if you want to go here to find out who's speaking, I guarantee you some of these people aren't speaking. So I don't know how you find out. Oh my God! We oh, so how many times did we mention it? And we're not going to win right now. They're deleting the results. Then, then there'll be a big controversy about how they fix no, the, the won't. results. We'll just be like, oh, oops, we went over eight. Maybe we shouldn't have spent thirty minutes shitting on the podcast awards. Well, all right, it's easy for me to say. I've already got what eight of those over there or something. So I, No, it's fine. Yeah. I can't help myself. Look, I, I, there's I, a picture of Ibbett. He's in his tux. He is speaking. See what I'm saying? The positive is. spin is it's all about Ibbett as far as I'm concerned. Oh, stop. And now Schwood. Schwood and Ibbett, everything else, gravy. Hey, Corolla shows up like this photo indicates. Mm-hmm. Everybody wins. <laughs> right? And then we can make <laughs> more accusations on how they haven't actually booked anybody. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what's happening. Anyway, comedy folks, that's why we're comedy. Yeah, we're just having Parody. a good time. Yeah, we're, we're all can, we're joking. Yeah, we're uh, all laughing. This will be a reason to win. It's, everything's fine. Oh, he's yeah, yeah. There's the Chris Jericho announcement. There it is. Yep. Okay. Here we go. All right. And Chris Jericho's great. If you, if if you are not a wrestling fan, he is very very funny. He's very charismatic. I think he will do uh, a great job as a host. Oh it, yes. Uh, it is something that I wish it would have been a a delight to walk up on, to share a stage with with Chris Jericho. Uh, if we if if we win an award, so I'll have to. Uh, well, have Schwood to will get to. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to write something for for Schwood to say to to Chris Jericho if and when we win an award. Yeah, you should totally do that. While you're at it, write something for me to say if I win anything. <laughs> I will. I'll write. Uh, you know, hey, uh, so did you guys really book uh, Dennis Miller? <laughs> LOL, just joking. 
Whatever you do, don't listen to episode 800 of TMS. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh. drop bombs on you yeah. in your shoddily run convention. That's actually, cheap. it's kind of a good point. 800 is a conspicuous number. It's like, you see that in the feed and go, ooh, we should listen to that. They probably did something special. No, we just shat on the NMX the entire <laughs> 45 minutes. It's going to be fine. It's fine. It's going to be, it's going to be great. It's, you know what? Here, here's the thing. It's really easy for us to kind of sit back, pull up a website, and say, "Oh, look how crummy and uncoordinated this all is." Man. Yeah, hold on. Wait. Let me bring up the Nerdtacular site. Yeah, let's oh. do that. Bring that up. Let's see. Actually, that one's really well kept and super good right now. But see if you can find it. <laughs> Bad uh, see if oh, can... look at this Nerdtacular. You have a bunch of people <laughs> aligned through the name. That's clever. Oh, is uh, <laughs> Nicole listed on there? Oh, nope. She's off. Oh, because she's not coming now. <laughs> no, look at this. Nope. Uh, I got Carboni in a terrible uh, suit. Really handsome. Yeah. That's original. Justin Robert Young's last on the list because his name is alphabetically last, which kind of yeah, sucks. Yeah, way to bury me. Yeah. Me and Terpster just I, uh, chilling in the basement. <laughs> watch, <laughs> watch, the podcast, watch the podcast awards ad this year. Like when they uh, announce all of the nominees, they'll play a little snippet from, from an episode like they do with the Oscars. So you can kind of oh, hear, yeah. oh, this is what they're uh, being nominated for. And they'll play a clip from this show. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be great. Uh, we've contributed then to the bottom line. Uh, all right. Well, I'm sure it'll all work out fine. Fast and the Furious. Go see it in theaters now. Yeah. Uh, anything else, Justin, going on you want to mention? Uh, not much, man. I, I'm, I think, I'm thinking about giving up all this like work and podcasting stuff and just uh, just playing Hearthstone for the rest of my life. Oh, good. Uh, yeah. Are you, uh, I mean, I'm not going to stream it. I'm just going to sit and, and wait to dwindle down all my savings uh, as I... I fall into a uh, a a a H hole of can, uh, playing Hearthstone. Can constantly. can we actually can we try to play today? Because I actually do really want to truly see how bad you beat me today. Can we try that sometime? Uh, yeah. Let's no, fit definitely. It in. Well, okay. I should figure out how to actually add you. I, I had I had to delete the app. The 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 app was very glitchy for me, and I deleted it, and it has fixed a lot of problems. And oh. I think one of them is adding people which i think was a problem before when we were trying to figure that out oh that maybe that's why you never saw it maybe it was looping or something i'd heard of that happening to people so. uh so yeah no we'll we'll get on there and we'll uh we'll we'll, we'll play each other i i finally i think i'm 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 starting to get a, a handle on it like mm. so like people play the first two cards and i'm like oh i think i know i know what, what to do like, yeah and a deck mm -hmm. they're playing and, and yeah. what i should do to adjust my play to it well then you'll it's clear really fun game. Yeah, you'll beat me then, because I I'm still having trouble. I, I I it's like chess. No, if you just do what Dill showed you on that Nvidia stream, which by the way is great. When yeah. did you start doing that? Uh, it's three weeks now. Third that was third <laughs> episode. Yeah, so three uh, weeks. Yeah. yeah, that's really thanks. That's man. really fun. Thanks. I'd like uh, to uh, maybe we'll have what maybe what we'll do because people really like the Hearthstone. So I mean, one fun thing to do maybe is to bring you in and do a game for one of those hours do a couple of games or something that'd be great yeah. except for people would be like this guy sucks worse than you why are you <laughs> why did he play that guy? why did he forget to use his fireball well that's see that's the scary thing about twitch you go in there thinking everyone's gonna hate you because you're not good or whatever but they're the reason nvidia even approached me for this deal was they want they want what i do here there because right now all that's really happening over there and it's all good stuff but it's all streamers who are like pro gamers a lot of them just put on their headphones, crank the music up, and play, you know, League of Legends for two hours. And they want to fill this the programming out with something that's more conversational, more interesting, more entertaining, funny. Like the fact that we would both kind of suck, people would really enjoy that. Yeah. So man, we should talk to Nvidia because uh, we did a uh, we did a really fun stream, Brian and I, uh, when I was in Austin, mm. called uh, Hearth and Oats. <laughs> <laughs> we just it was just arena we yeah. just played arena runs yeah. and uh it was like really really fun but i think that would the only way that we would probably ever do that anymore would be if we like had a reason to do it yeah uh, someone had but, you somewhere doing it yeah. i wouldn't mind anyway, seeing uh, that no that'd be great and we should play today because okay. it'll be really uh really fun we'll get it in uh justin r young on twitter of course night attack tonight right tonight we have no idea what we're doing. Yeah. We're not good at this or any other podcast. Yeah. Uh, but what you can do is, uh, while you're waiting for us to plan what we're doing on Night Attack, is download the Jury Podcast. That is uh, my one mic show that I do on Sundays. If you like this segment, you will like the Jury Podcast. Uh, I talk all about... Uh, I really, I don't know. I, I spent like 15 minutes talking about a salad, and I was really 
pleased with the segment. Yeah. So if that intrigues you, <laughs> then go ahead and check that out. All I right. thought it was really funny. All right. And I've gotten some really good feedback on it. Also, man, people love telling me embarrassing stories. Yeah. I don't know what it is about me that people just love telling really, really, really embarrassing stories. But we had, I had a lady write in a really embarrassing uh, story. This is for mature audiences only, mm. but it is uh, mature in that it is ripe in its funniness. <laughs> uh, All right. You, uh, <laughs> and then that stemmed embarrassing uh, emails from embarrassing sexual stories from women because oh, I feel like there's wow. a lot of embarrassing sexual stories from a male perspective. Me men like to tell embarrassing sexual stories and one in particular man, she just programmed the show for the next <laughs> like three weeks. Oh, no. like, wow. It's some really, really funny stuff. Now so I'll have to check it out. Jurytalks.com uh, uh, the jury podcast uh, on Stitcher, iTunes, wherever. We have less of people telling us embarrassing stories because I do most of that here. I, my, the contingents <laughs> of embarrassing stories. Because you're sucking up me. all the oxygen here, Scojo. That's, right. That's right. Well, let me, so as I kick you out the door, this is the final thing I'll say to you, okay? This is on the 2015 featured speakers page on the NMX web website. <laughs> Fair warning, it says, quote, your thumbs may get seriously worked out from all the tweeting and typing you'll be doing as you note the tricks and tactics these experts will reveal over four days. I'm just going to close my eyes and imagine Brian Ibbett. And that's the only thing that helps me get mm. through the night. Better hold on to them thumbs, people. I mean, yep. That's how I'm going to begin my uh, my panel. Or yep. like when they introduced me for my panel. Hold on to your thumbs, people. Mm -hmm. You're going to be tweeting a lot of info. The holographic image of Adam Carolla will teach you many things. <laughs> <laughs> Come next week. All right, Justin, stay out of trouble. We'll talk to you soon, and let's play today. Absolutely. Bye now. All right. Off he goes. That's funny. That was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, dude, listen. In all honesty, it's gonna, it's fine, it's totally fine, but you have to it's admit gonna be, it is gonna be, it's gonna be great, and it's for me. Yeah. The thing is um, seeing like all these other people that are outside of the frog pen circle that I don't get to see at Nerdtacular, like CC Chapman yeah. and um, Michael Go Hagen, and uh, uh, I mean, will who knows? Will, who will Chapman be, be there? Is he Leo Laportson. Uh, he seems to go all the time. Okay. Yeah, he's on the think, he's on their photo list there, so mm -hmm. maybe he's maybe he's speaking or something. I don't know. I like CC Chapman. He's cool. Maybe. Yeah. He's a good guy. I don't think Leo's going though. I think he might At be all? out. I think he's out I this year. He's speaking. Wow. Is he speaking? I don't think he is. No, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I could see him maybe not speaking, but I could see him showing up. Or... I don't think he's going. I'm. I could be wrong. I don't know. Well, who knows? Todd Cochran. I'll, I'll see. Ah, Todd you're going to see Todd Cochran. Yes. I'll see uh, podcast pickle man Gary Leland. I'll when, see if he Dave asks Slusher. Listen, if he, if Todd Cochran asks, asks you a question, start saying it before he finishes the question. <laughs> oh, sorry, I skipped ahead. Let me backtrack. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. All right, uh, that's gonna do it for us. We're just having fun, everybody. It's just a good time. Uh, that's the end of the show. frogpantscom slash TMS. It was a long one today. Uh, the morning stream at gmail.com. Happy 800, everyone. 801 471 is our voicemail. You can uh, find us on Twitter at Coverville, at Scott Johnson, at Morning Stream. Uh, the good news is nothing will interfere with regular shows this week. I was worried about a dental thing, but that got moved. Yeah. Yay. So, uh, yep, we're, we're all in uh, for everything. So, everything's good. Uh, Brian, mm -hmm. do you have anything else? You good? Until music, are we good? Uh, yeah, I don't think you got any happy happy eight hundred, Scott. Yeah, thanks you for, too, man. Thanks for bringing me on the uh, the journey of the last eight hundred or seven hundred ninety nine shows. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. And just think about that eight hundred. I know. That's let's do the math just real quick. Math. Okay. Calculator. All right, here we go. <laughs> eight hundred, an average of let's say an hour and a half. Let's just be generous. Sure. Okay. I think that's average. Hour and a half per show. I don't think that's average. I would say I would say an hour forty minutes. Minimum is our average. Yeah, probably. But we'll just just to be we'll just be safe, just to freak everyone out. Ninety. Okay. We'll say ninety minutes. Okay. So eight hundred. Oh, damn it. Eight hundred times ninety. We have been doing this show for. Is this correct? Oh, that's not. That's in minutes. So I got to divide that by sixty to get hours. We have done this show. To, uh, if we're going by that low estimate, twelve hundred hours. <laughs> and that doesn't count any of the prep or any of the post or anything like that. Is wow. It, is that and a lot? Uh, what is that? Like How's that? Uh, divide that number by 24. By 24, that is 50 straight days of recording. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
a month and a half of solid. Oh yeah. my gosh, that's crazy! Easily two months when you, if you were to do the, if we were to use real numbers. Oh my heck! I didn't expect that number to freak me out. The last one didn't, but that one did. Fifty just freaked me out. Fifty oh, yeah. days. You heard it here, folks. Last episode of TMS. Woo! All right. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed listening for fifty straight days. Everybody who has. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's going to do it. Actually, email us and tell us if you're one of those who've who've heard every episode we've done. I'm very curious about that. Mm. Email us, tweet us, let us know. Very curious. All right, Brian, let's go. Music, what do you have? Disco Rex emailed in and said, uh, Good morning, Slarty and Bardfast. It's my birthday, and I'm celebrating for one more than one for more than one reason. I have accepted a job at Blizzard, and I'm relocating my family from Seattle to Los Angeles. I got my dream job, and I'm starting the next big chapter in my life. Amazing! That's and so you cool. got a, uh, yeah. your your lifetime key. Uh, using it. Yes. Also, could you uh, could you talk to the the shooter team that they're making that uh, Overwatch game? You get some betas there. Okay. Could you uh, hook me up with a bunch of packs of cards in yeah. Hearthstone, please? Can you send me those new uh, messenger bags? That'd be awesome. <laughs> All right, we're back. Sorry, there's a little silence. Here is where silence. you come in. I'm mm. driving down, and I'll be relying on TMS to keep me awake and entertained for many miles down I-5. I'll be saving TMS episodes, so I have plenty to listen to along the way. This is an amazing, terrifying, exciting, mad time for me. And as such, I request that Brian finds an amazing cover of Mad World by Gary Jules. Thank you both for inspiring me to pursue my dream by living yours on the rodeo, Ryan Discorax Davidson. There you go. Now, this this brings to light a an issue that I see all the time with um, people who don't real who who aren't uh, aware of when a cover is a cover right like um uh, all along the watchtower by Jimi hendrix people don't know uh that that's a cover of a bob dylan song mm-hmm. or uh soft cells tainted love a, cl- a cover of uh, gloria jones um and that shows you what an amazing job that gary jules and was it michael anderson and gary jules uh, what an amazing job they did in covering the song by tears for fears mad world that they transformed it enough to where people who heard it for the first time thought well this has to be them it's so good it has this to be. this is news to me today i had no idea i always thought it was him and not i had no idea tears for fears had anything to do what? with it really yep. oh wow and i love tears for fears like you know shout shout let it all out all that bull crap yeah like, yeah it's great oh, but well, I had you owe no it idea. to yourself to go check out the original version of mad world um, right. and that whole album that it comes from the hurting yeah uh as much as as songs from the big chair levied out so many singles mm-hmm. i think pound for pound um the hurting is a far better album um or is a better album maybe not a far better album they're both really good albums but um the hurting uh which was tears for fears first album is just amazing so, well I, uh, I i there's probably a generation of kids who think it's all from the gears of war commercials do you remember that <laughs> right could be i wonder or yes. donnie darko or something or whatever right. so anyway this is all very this is enlightening this whole time we've spent together just now good well yeah. the more you know <laughs> uh all right so how about a cover of mad world this one is uh is awesome i don't i don't have an album listing so i think this was submitted by the artist themselves as opposed to me getting it from the label but this is alex parks and um and an amazing version of mad world all right, great. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. We, all something today. <laughs> we should have Tom. I'm not sure about Nicole. We'll see how she's feeling. I know she's okay. uh, not doing great, but um, man, what a tough lady. I'm telling you, women, mm. we don't give you enough credit. We're just yeah. a bunch of schlubs. We'd be we'd be curled up in a fetal position with our thumbs in our mouths, crying, and and mm-hmm. just some of the stuff that you guys have to put up with. Do not know how you do it, but it's amazing. Anyway, here's your song. We'll be back tomorrow. Take care. Mm-hmm.